The owner of the system, Chen Fan, happily announced, then received the God of Embroidery achievement. The Supreme Goddess, the Tao system, clapped her palms enthusiastically and said, Wow! She decided that the main thing was not to upset him. Tao thought disappointedly as she asked, Didn't he say before that as a man, he wouldn't do something like embroidery? Chen Fan grabbed her into his arms and asked excitedly, Now she will teach him cultivation. Tao irritably pushed him away and replied that it was too early. Chen Fan asked indignantly, Is it too early? He said that he had already completed all the tasks she gave him. Zither playing, go, calligraphy, painting, poetry, singing, martial arts, farming, logging, fishing. Chen Fan shouted angrily that in all these professions, he had received the title of God. He spent ten years on this. He repeated indignantly once again, ten years. Does she even understand how he lived these ten years? The goddess of Tao laughed cheerfully and replied that, of course, she had walked this path with him. Chen Fan asked in surprise, have you walked the path? He said indignantly that she just lay there and watched him practice. Tao pouted her lips offendedly and replied, it happened that she rested a little. Chen Fan asked gloomily, she just can't teach him this, right? These words struck her to the core. She sadly said through her tears that she was very upset that he had such an opinion about her. She said she was leaving. Chen Fan looked at her in surprise. A notification came that the owner had learned all the system skills, starting the owner mode. Chen Fan asked in surprise, master's mode. Suddenly all his clothes disappeared, and a luminous whirlwind swirled around him. Chen Fan asked indignantly, is she joking? When the magical whirlwind dragged him down somewhere, he angrily shouted curses at the Tao system. Some time later, the dog heard some noise. Someone's voice, turning to her, said, wow. Xiaobai recognized his steps, even though he had not yet opened the door. The dog looked at him dumbfounded. Chen Fan stood naked on the threshold. He sheepishly explained that something had happened and thanked the dog for covering for him. Chen Fan hugged Xiaobai tightly and complained offendedly that this woman was even more of a dog than him. He learned all the professions, as she asked. So now Dao was offended and sent him on his way without any instructions. After looking around, he said, So this is it. Land of monsters and martial artists. Divine continent. Chen Fan looked at the trees and rocks. A bird of prey was soaring in the sky. Still holding the dog close to him, Chen Fan decided that since he is already here, now she will not restrict him. Tomorrow will be a big day. Xiaobai looked at the owner sadly. Chen Fan realized that he was hungry. Let him wait, he will get ready, and they will hunt together. The dog barked happily. Chen Fan Wu indignantly told her not to jump on him. He has no clothes on. After some time, the bird of prey fell down. The daughter of the head of the Jade Sword Clan, Yi King Wu, said that this is an evil monster. Her Jade Sword Clan will not leave their kind alive. One of the four guards of the Hundred Beast Clan, Black Hawk asked, Jade Sword Clan? He stated that the third and seventh elders of her sect had long since bowed down to his clan. Her clan is already in their hands. Yi King Wu shouted in disbelief that this was impossible. Her father wouldn't allow it. Black Hawk angrily warned that she had better think about herself first. Yi King Wu realized with alarm that he was attacking. The Black Hawk flew up and pushed her down. She thought that if he fell somewhere in the mountains or forest, then he would not be able to maneuver there. She might have a chance. At worst, they will die together. The Black Raven furiously asked questions. Is she trying to trick him so that he lands in the mountains or in the forest? She thinks he's that stupid. Yi King Wu thought doomedly that he had revealed her plan. The power difference is too great. Chen Fan, standing on a dais, joyfully shouted that there is this huge chicken. Yi King Wu, covered in bruises and wounds, lay below on the ground, mentally asking, Is this the end? Chen Fan activated the archery god skill. He took aim and happily shouted that they were having fried chicken today. Black Hawk asked dumbfounded chicken. Who did he call a chicken? He reported that he was a proud hawk. Then he angrily asked the question, Is this pathetic mortal hunting him? Is he looking for death? Suddenly the Black Falcon saw the arrow approaching and was dumbfounded and asked what? How is this possible? The arrow hit him square in the chest. As he fell, the Black Falcon said that it was impossible for a mortal to shoot this arrow. Yi King Wu noticed in surprise traces of Dao on the arrow. This is really them. At that moment, the dog saw the girl and joyfully rushed to her. Chen Fan, calling out to the dog, said that he did not run like that. No one would take his prey. Yi King Wu asked again in Xiaobai, Is that the dog's name? At this moment, Xiaobai ran up to her, wagging his tail happily. Yi King Wu mentally noted that he had powerful energy. This dog is very strong. 
She thought hopefully, if this person is so powerful that he keeps such a powerful creature as a pet, then her sect is saved. Chen Fan asked in surprise why the dog froze. Xiao Bai looked at the girl enthusiastically. Yi King Wu was surprised to think that she couldn't see this guy's energy. He must be hiding it. Chen Fan said with delight. What a beauty. Like a fairy. His heart began to beat faster. The dog looked at its owner in surprise. Yi King Wu bowed respectfully and asked him for salvation. The girl realized that this was her limit. Her eyes closed. Chen Fan asked excitedly what happened to her. When he approached and realized that she had lost consciousness, he said in surprise, was she so badly injured, but she was still standing. She must be practicing martial arts. Sometime later in his house, he said she was lucky that he found her. Chen Fan stood in front of the girl who was lying helplessly on the bed. He said that although he received the title of God of Medicine, but this is for mortals. He's not sure it will work on her. If he can cultivate, then maybe he can learn to heal. A dog barked from the street. Chen Fan said he was coming. Let him not rush him. Now he's plucking the chicken. With these words, he went out into the street, rolling up his sleeves as he went. Yi King Wu opened her eyes. She sat up in bed, examined herself, and asked in surprise, had her wounds been healed? Judging by the position of the sun, she had only been unconscious for an hour. She thought that this master must be a hermit. If she asked him for help, he could defeat the Hundred Beast Clan. Then, falling onto the bed, she noted with bliss that this bed was so soft and comfortable. She took a closer look at the pattern on the bed and the energy of this mattress and realized that this was the Tao system. Then she looked around carefully and saw paintings on the walls. I remembered the heavens covering the mountains, the howl of animals, the palace on the holy land. She wondered what kind of place this was. Looking at the paintings, she had evolved from an intermediate stage warrior spirit to a supreme stage. She asked with delight, did the world hidden in the paintings help her achieve enlightenment? What is this? At that moment, the voice of the owner of the house was heard, who noticed that she had woken up. She asked where he was from. He, holding feathers in his hands, hesitantly asked, has she ever heard of land? Yi King Wu asked in surprise, Earth. She thought in shock, is this really the world in these paintings? She had never heard of him, but she couldn't admit it in the face of such a master. Looking at her, he thought hopefully, if she knows what the Earth is, then maybe he can return. Yi King Wu noticed that the world in these paintings was very similar to the Holy Land from the legends. Then she said out loud that she had heard about the Earth. Chen Fan asked excitedly, have you heard of her? She said with reverence that the Earth is the Holy Land from ancient legends. The spiritual aura there is strong, and ancient beasts live high in the mountains. Strong enough people can reach the stars, and strong enough magical beasts can swallow the sun or moon whole. This is the holy land for cultivation that every martial arts practitioner dreams of. Chen Fan thought doubtfully, is the earth really that steep? Do they even think about the same land? He asked out loud, does she know where it is? She was sure that she was right, he came from the holy land to break the shackles of evil. She said aloud with enthusiasm that the earth has always been something unattainable, a location within the reach of only a few. She's not strong enough to keep such secrets. Chen Fan suggested with disappointment, maybe she hit her head. Yi King Wu knelt down and said with trepidation, she asks to be taken as a student. She will serve him faithfully in gratitude for the fact that he saved her. Chen Fan decisively realized that this girl had definitely hit her head. He mentally asked in bewilderment, does she want to become a disciple of an ordinary mortal? An inner voice asked Yi King Wu, what is she doing? He saved her, healed her, and even helped her achieve enlightenment. He has already done so much, and she still has the nerve to ask him to take her on as a student. What if he gets angry? Chen Fan leaned over her anxiously, touched her forehead with his forehead, and noted that there seemed to be no temperature. Looking into her eyes, he smiled and told her to stand up and take his hand. Yi King Wu extended her hand with excitement. Chen Fan said that he was just an ordinary mortal. She doesn't need such a teacher. She thought in horror that he called himself a mere mortal. She upset him so much. An inner voice asked her, what had she done? How could she upset him so much? Yi King Wu thought doomedly, it is obvious that she is not fit to be his disciple, not even fit to be a servant or a slave. Chen Fan, heading towards the exit, told her to rest a little more. Looking after him, Yi King Wu asked why he called himself a mere mortal. Is he simply pretending to be mortal so that he can experience the mortal world for himself? She sadly realized that by telling him that she wanted to be a student, she had prevented him from exploring the world, which is why he was upset. She realized she had to apologize. Hurrying after him, she decided that if he wanted it so much, 
Then she would address him as a mortal. This will cheer him up. She went outside and, seeing him roasting chicken on the fire, noted that he pretended to be mortal so well that she did not feel his energy at all. Chen Fan looked at the fried game with appetite and said enthusiastically that it had a great smell. This is worthy of his title as god of cooking. Yi King Wu walked over and said that she was young and naive, so she accidentally offended him. She asked for forgiveness. Chen Fan thought questioningly, is his brain back in place? Now she behaves more appropriately. He said out loud with a smile that he was glad that it was based on legs. Yi King Wu said embarrassedly that she never asked his name. He replied that his name was Chen Fan, but she could just call him Chen. She said that then Mr. Chen would call him, and he could call her King Wu. Chen Fan handed her a piece of fried game and asked, The smell is wonderful, right? King Wu looked at the piece of meat in horror and mentally asked, Is this the Black Hawk? One of the four guards of the Hundred Beast Clan. How could he fry him? Does he want to share the meat with her? She shook her head and quickly said, Thank him for his kindness, but she had urgent matters to attend to, so she had to leave so as not to disturb him. Chen Fan agreed and said that he would see her off. King Wu jumped aside in fear and said that there was no need to accompany her, she was already leaving. She jumped onto the roof and disappeared from sight. Chen Fan thought ecstatically, as expected from a martial arts practitioner, she disappeared in an instant. He dreamily asked when he could become just like her. A little while later, Jade Sword Clan. Bloody bodies lay everywhere. The Jade Sword Clan was attacked by the beastmen with swords and spears. The bloody sword man cursed angrily and said, He has always treated Yang Tai and Lai Tai Zin well. The head of the Jade Sword Clan, Yi Jing Hong, asked in bewilderment why they decided to betray their clan. Lai Tai Zin, the seventh elder, asked mockingly, The stupid old man has not been able to get stronger for thirty years, so why would they follow him? Yang Tai, the third elder, stated that sooner or later they would still be destroyed by the Hundred Beast Clan. They made the right choice. Yi Jing Hong shouted angrily, shame on them. If they had not united with them, then this clan would never have defeated him. A man with long dark hair and long light robes interrupted his speech. Kin Hao, the young head of the Hundred Beast Clan, smugly stated that the wise head knows when to stop. If Yi Jing Hong joins his clan, he will spare his life and give him the title of elder. The head of the Jade Sword Clan angrily asked, Does he want him, Yi Jing Hong, to surrender? They are unworthy. Let them dream further. Kin Hao said mockingly that he had no choice then. Yi King Wu appeared in the sky and said that Yang Tai and Tai Zin are pathetic traitors. She decisively declared that today she would clear the clan of them. The elders looked at each other, laughed and said, they knew that their beauty would run away in fear. They couldn't think that she would come back to die. The head of the Jade Sword Clan displeasedly asked why she came back. Let him run. She replied that her father should leave them for her. Yi Jing Hong excitedly told her not to talk nonsense. She is not Kin Hao's opponent. Then, covering it with himself, he sternly said that he would delay them. He told her to run away. Kin Hao mockingly said that nothing would work out. He ordered the traitors to kill Yi Jing Hong and capture King Wu. The elders obediently rushed to carry out his order. King Wu angrily shouted that the ungrateful traitors would die now. She drew her sword and rushed to attack. Yang Tai and Tai Zin asked in horror, the highest stage, how could she rise to the highest stage so quickly? This is impossible. King Wu attacked and the traitors were damaged. Kin Hao shouted furiously that she was only at the early stage. How was she able to jump through all three stages in just a day? The head of the Jade Sword Clan looked at his daughter in surprise. Meanwhile, pointing her sword forward, she said that now it was Kin Hao's turn. He screamed in fear that they were retreating. When he was already sitting on the palanquin held by the beastmen, he proudly declared over his shoulder that the days of their clan were numbered anyway. He then proudly said they were leaving. Everyone in the Jade Sword Clan rejoiced. They had won. The clan survived. Yi Jing Hong asked, What's going on here? Yu Hu Island is located in the East China Sea of the Divine Continent under the jurisdiction of Chilin. There are three main clans on the island, the Hundred Beasts Clan, the Jade Ball Clan, and the Sacred Valley Clan. Nameless Mountain is located to the east of the Jade Ball Clan. Some time later, Yi Jing Hong, after listening to his daughter's story, said, If he is really as powerful as she said, then she clearly overestimated herself if she believed that she could become his student. King Wu guiltily agreed that she had been stupid, but he was lenient and forgave her. She asked in surprise, Why don't they just fly up the mountain? The father sternly replied that they should walk to show their respect. And then he added that she should remember to give them their jade seal as a sign of gratitude. 
Even though it is their clan's treasure, Yi Jing Hong is worried that he won't like the seal. Looking at the seal in his palms, he said that from his point of view, it might seem useless to him. But they must offer him the most precious thing they have. Although the Jade Sword clan repelled Kin Hao's attack for a while, he and his clan would surely return again. That's why they need strong allies like this gentleman. Pointing her hand towards the house, King Wu happily announced that they were almost there. The father replied that this was great. When they stepped onto the bridge that was located in front of the house, the head of the Jade Sword Clan was surprised to think that the bridge was already glowing with the energy of Tao. And Kai rises from the water like steam. The entire courtyard is covered in Tao energy, and the Kai rises to the heavens. When they entered the courtyard, Yi Jing Hong saw a huge green tree. He realized with delight that this was the legendary ancestor of all trees, Zhang Chan King. Wrapped around the tree was the legendary ancestor of all vines, the climbing dragon vine. The legendary ancient beast, the golden sun crow, was sitting on a tree. When Yi Jing Hong fell to the ground in excitement, the daughter asked, Is he okay? He replied that the power of the earth frightens him. At this time, Chen Fan, picking his teeth with a toothpick, dreamily said that he would live in this world calmly and peacefully. Suddenly, he heard a noise and asked if he had guests. When he opened the gate, he looked at his guests in surprise. King Wu said embarrassedly, she asks him for forgiveness for coming again. Chen Fan asked in surprise what brought her here. She replied that she came with her father, who found out that the master had saved her and decided to thank him personally. Chen Fan was surprised to notice that Yi Jing Hong's legs were shaking and he was sweating. Did they walk here? He suggested that the head of the clan probably couldn't fly. Yi Jing Hong, noticing the toothpick in Chen Fan's teeth, thought in amazement that this was a top-class weapon. His clan's treasure was not even close to this. Chen Fan noticed that everyone was looking at the toothpick and threw it on the ground, guiltily saying that he was asking for forgiveness, because it is rude to greet guests with a toothpick in your mouth. Everyone stared at the ground in shock. Yi Jing Hong thought in shock, asking the question that he just spit out a top-class weapon. Chen Fan hospitably told them to come in and have some tea. King Wu smiled and said, It would be my pleasure. The head of the Jade Sword Clan suggested calling him simply Old Man Ye. You look around, he never ceased to be amazed at everything he saw. Old Man Ye thought with delight that this was a spiritual flower of the highest quality. And this pond is full of spiritual energy. The structure of the entire garden perfectly conveys the Tao. Chen Fan, seeing the admiring glances of the guests, was proud that this was his personal masterpiece, which he created, becoming the god of gardens, architecture, and sculpture. He asked Yi Jing Hong, does he understand this too? He asked the question again, what would he say about his garden? He thought that Chen Fan liked to pretend to be an ordinary mortal, he should play along. The main thing is not to praise him too much. He answered out loud that the house and pavilion were built beautifully, and the wood was also beautiful. King Wu listened to her father, feeling ashamed for him. Chen Fan cheerfully offered to drink tea. He thought that old man Yi seemed to be an ordinary farmer. What else could he say? When the mugs were full, Yi Jing Hong began to drink quickly. Chen Fan warned him to drink slowly so as not to choke. The head of the Jade Sword Clan worriedly thought that the spiritual energy in this tea scared him. He feels the power spreading through his body. This heals his old wounds. This tea is many times better than a medicinal pill. Noisily placing the mug on the saucer, he said with delight that Mr. Chen has delicious tea. Very tasty. Father wondered, has King Wu already drunk this tea? After a cup of tea, she reached the third level of the Jade Heart Sutra. Every time he makes a breakthrough, his seven emotions and six senses seem to explode. Scratching the back of his head in embarrassment, Chen Fan asked, Does King Wu have a soul stone with him? She thought with alarm that she had almost called him a master, so he decided to distract her. As expected of a true master, he saw her intention and stopped her. Chen Fan said excitedly that martial arts practitioners have a stone that can even contain mountains. The soul stone functions by harnessing the spirit of a martial artist. She showed him this stone and told the gentleman to place his right hand on it. He put it down and thought with excitement, if he has the spirit of a martial artist, he will be able to cultivate and climb to the top. A little time passed, but nothing happened. Chen Fan asked in disappointment, if the soul stone didn't even tremble, then there isn't a single drop of spirit in it. King Wu thought in shock, what nonsense. Has the world gone crazy? The master has no spirit. He exhaled in disappointment and admitted that it was no surprise that the system had abandoned him. He's incompetent. When he stepped aside, King Wu asked her father in a whisper why he had no spirit. 
Yi Jing Hong replied that it was obvious he did something to deceive the soul stone and to appear weak. King Wu asked in bewilderment, why would he pretend that he couldn't cultivate? The father sternly replied that she did not understand anything. For such a master, it is important to experience the full range of mortal emotions from joy to bitterness. He asked her the question, what upsets a mortal the most? The daughter suggested that it was the strongest. Then the realization dawned on her that there was nothing worse than not being able to cultivate. She added, live an ordinary and empty life, to be a weak and useless creature on earth. Yi Jing Hong confirmed this and exclaimed that he was just trying to experience the pain of despair. Chen Fan looked up with his arms crossed behind his back. Yi Jing Hong turned to Yi King Wu, touching her shoulder, and said that this is her chance. Yi King Wu said in a daze that he did, but she didn't finish speaking. Yi Jing Hong shouted that she must calm down the master. He added, she should give him the opportunity to feel the warmth of the mortal world. He added that he would definitely remember it. Chen Fan closed his eyes peacefully and thought that thanks to the system he could fulfill his dream. He immediately angrily stuck his finger forward and shouted that the goddess was useless. He asked her why she gave him hope. Yi King Wu walked up behind him and asked him a question, is everything okay? She straightened her hair with her hand and said, maybe there's something wrong with the soul stone she brought. She said, even so, it's not bad to be mortal. Yi King Wu gently touched his shoulder. Chen Fan looked at her in surprise and thanked her. Yi King Wu told him that his father brought this jade seal to give it as a gift of gratitude. She held out the jade seal in her hands and asked him to accept it. Chen Fan opened his eyes in shock and asked a question, was this a symbol of their love? He mentally noted that the jade was good, but poorly made. He assumed it wasn't too valuable, so he'd accept it. Chen Fan carefully examined the seal and, looking at Yi Jing Hong and Yi King Wu, thought, looking at them, he sees that for Yi Jing Hong there is nothing unusual in the seal. Yi King Wu turned to him and noticed that it was already late. It's time for them. Chen Fan extended her hand towards them and said that she would accompany them. Yi Jing Hong approached him and asked him to let them take out his trash. He rubbed both his palms together and a blush appeared on his cheeks. Chen Fan thought dumbfounded that he was very hardworking. He guessed that Yi Jing Hong had worked hard to pay for Yi King Wu's cultivation. Chen Fan immediately pointed at the box of bones with an awkward smile and exclaimed, of course. He explained that he had not finished eating the black hawk meat. He asked if they could take out the bones and throw away the remains. Yi Jing Hong put his hands out to the sides and replied, naturally. Some time later, when they were on the threshold of the house, Yi Jing Hong said that they did not need to be escorted far. Chen Fan turned to Yi King Wu and told her to come again. Yi King Wu, holding a box of bones, smiled sweetly and replied, of course. Yi Jing Hong was holding a huge bag of waste in his hands. After some time, there were hundreds of beasts in the clan hall. The man sitting on the bone throne asked a question. Was this Yi King Wu able to jump through three stages at once? He exclaimed indignantly that it was even hard to imagine. Kin Peng put his hands forward in excuse and exclaimed that someone must have helped her. Kin Peng, the head of the Hundred Beast Clan, said that they had been climbing for a very long time with the help of the elixir, and she so easily jumped through three stages at once in a day. Kin Hao added, which is why he retreated to ask his opinion. Kin Peng asked Mr. Envoy, what would he say? The messenger was dressed in a black cloak. His eyes glowed bright scarlet. The envoy heard that the Taoist treasure Hoyan had appeared on Yuhua Island. Kin Hao gritted his teeth angrily and shouted that this was their chance. He added that no one had found this for a hundred years. Kin Peng warily continued to look towards the envoy and listen to his speech. The messenger at this time said if they could get it, but he did not finish his thought. Kin Hao stood in a stance that showed respect for his father and asked him to give him an order. He exclaimed that he would take the best and defeat the Jade Sword Clan and then take the treasure. Kin Peng said thoughtfully that such an opportunity is indeed rare. The messenger at this time said that they did not need to rush. Kin Hao became wary. Kin Peng looked towards the envoy with a sad look. The messenger told them to spread rumors that the Jade Sword Clan had obtained this treasure. Kin Peng asked him a question, does he want everyone to fight each other? The messenger grinned and said in a satisfied voice that they would wait and then take everything. Kin Peng grinned, anticipating what would happen next. Kin Hao stood looking at his father with a smug smile. The castle where they were was covered with cracks. Smoke and black energy came from this. Some time later, in the mountains and in the middle of the forest, where birds flew alone. Yi King Wu shouted that she was ready. She told Yi Jing Hong to come here. 
She held the box of bones in her hands and told him to open it because it contained a first-class artifact. Yi Jinghong cautiously and slowly opened the cloth that contained it. With trembling hands, after a while he opened the fabric, and from this a bright glow poured out in all directions. Yi Jinghong shouted in delight, what a strong aura. He added that this master's waste should become great artifacts of all their humanity. After some time, he took out a toothpick from the cloth, shining with Taoist symbols. He put it forward and said, if he can use even a little of the power of this toothpick, he will be able to demolish mountains. Yi Qingwu looked at it in shock and said that this treasure scared her. Yi Jinghong thought, at first he wanted to return to the clan and just look at the gifts that their master awarded them. He took the box of bones and thought he really wanted to try it. Yi Qingwu advised him to try it because this is not ordinary meat. Yi Jinghong closed his eyes and took the meat in his hands and took a bite. He said enthusiastically, this meat has such powerful spiritual power and this taste. Yi Jinghong leaned towards the box where the meat lay and after a while emptied it. He powerfully thrust his hands forward, clenching them into fists, and screamed. Yi King Wu covered her hands from the bright glow and mentally asked the question, what happened to his spiritual power? Yi Jing Hong suddenly relaxed and asked a question, not believing what was happening. Did he make a breakthrough? Yi King Wu thought, her father had not been able to make a breakthrough for 30 years. He reached his limit, but as soon as he ate this meat, his fate changed. Yi Jing Hong shouted thanks to the Lord for his gifts and help. He, starting to bow on the ground, shouted that he would never forget his kindness. Yi King Wu sadly looked down and thought that she should have stayed when the gentleman offered her something to eat. She mentally asked the question, when will she be able to taste fine dining now? The next day, the ant was fast asleep on a high tree branch. The bird of prey flew across the heavenly surface and Ziobai was chasing after it. Chen Fan cursed and said that his inventory was full. He won't be able to take his tent with him. His inventory contained everything necessary for a picnic, soda and medicinal water, everything for hygiene, food and weapons. Ziobai barked excitedly, looking at the owner. At this time, the bird landed next to Chen Fan and soon landed on his shoulder. Chen Fan, stroking the bird's head, said that he would go down the hill and find a suitable place to camp. He added that he would look for the soul testing stones that many clans use. He addressed the bird and Ziobai, saying that they had better not go with him. He said goodbye to Ziobai and Zionial, telling them to keep an eye on the house. He walked to the bridge passing over a long river and sang a song, May he not grieve that he will not meet a friend on the way. The song asked the question, Who else knows his name? Ziobai and Zionial followed him with their gaze. Suddenly Ziobai said that his owner stroked him and called him by name. His wing lit up with scarlet spiritual energy. Ziobai, showing his blue energy, said that the owner said his name first. He will always be number one for him. Ziyoyao was a divine phoenix. Ziyobai was a heavenly wolf. At this time, the ant, with tears in his eyes, thought that the 10,086th time had passed when the owner did not pay attention to him. It was an ancient demonic ant. Next to him on the branches was a climbing dragon vine. Vine asked the question, does the owner really want to be an ordinary cultivator? Ziyobai said that this is the owner's decision, and he doesn't even know about the existence of the ant. The ant shouted indignantly, the owner did not kick him out, which means he knows that he is here. Ziobai grinned and said that it was time for him to admit it, because the owner doesn't know who he is. The demonic ant shouted that he was ready to die for his master. There were tears in his eyes, which he wiped away with his paw. The legendary ancestor of all trees exclaimed that there is nothing terrible here. He shouted that they would all protect the house together while he was away. Meanwhile in Kingsey City, the sun shone brightly on the market stalls. One of the guys wished good morning to Chen Fan. Chen Fan greeted them shyly. The merchant sitting behind the counter asked him a question, what did he bring to them at the market today? At the same moment, Chen Fan felt someone's breath on his neck. He opened his eyes in shock and heard the girl whisper that they were looking forward to his return to them. Chen Fan shouted at her not to come. The girl held a fan in her hands and told him not to be afraid because she would not eat him. She smiled shyly and continued to stand there. She shouted that she would not take money from him. Chen Fan turned away in fear and began to leave, thanking her. Suddenly, a man grabbed his arm. Chen Fan looked back doomedly. The man invited him to talk about new dishes. He asked him to look at it. Chen Fan thought desperately, oh no. After some time, he found himself in the building. Chen Fan said that they were doing well. The man clasped his hands and answered with a smile that it was all thanks to what he taught them. 
He exclaimed, that's why their tavern is so busy. Chen Fan has brought his cooking skills to the maximum level. The man shared that there are more and more people in the city, and they don't know why. He said that on the second floor, almost all the rooms were occupied by cultivators. He asked if he would stay on the first floor. Chen Fan began to climb up, holding the railing with his hands. He mentally confirmed and began to reason that cultivators and ordinary mortals were indeed different. He asked a question. They won't eat him, even regardless of the fact that they are also people. Chen Fan grinned smugly and told the man running this establishment not to worry. He added that he would feel great on the second floor. The man smiled warmly and told him to feel good here. Suddenly, something suddenly flew past Chen Fan. The blue mug landed on the floor and shattered into small pieces. One of the guys was sitting at the table, arrogantly crossing his legs and looking at the guy cleaning something from the floor. He asked him a question, is he Lin Xiaoyan? The genius of the Lin family? He caustically asked him again, why does he work in this poor establishment? The girl sitting next to him covered her mouth with her hand in mockery. Chen Fan tried to observe this situation so as not to be noticed. The girl at the next table asked, Lin Xiaoyan? She asked the question, was it he who started cultivating for eight years and made a breakthrough at nine? The guy sitting next to him rested his head on his hand in boredom and replied that only at the age of 10, he suddenly lost all his spiritual skills and was expelled from his family. Chen Fan noted with offense that this sounded too familiar. He looked at Lin Xiaoyan, who was picking up the pieces on the floor. Lin Xiaoyan thought angrily, if only this creature had not eaten his spiritual power. The guy sitting at the table threw the coin down and said if he fell to his knees in front of him three times, he would give him another gold coin. Lin Xiaoyan angrily squeezed the rag and said, Lin Dong. The gold coin fell to the floor and lay next to the fragments. Lin Xiaoyan furiously shouted to stop being bullied. He asked him a question. They had already expelled him, so what else did he expect from him? Lin Xiaoyan turned around and began to leave. Lin Dong clenched his hands angrily and asked him a question. Where was he going? He shouted angrily that he hadn't let him go yet. Lin Xiaoyan told him that he always bullied the weak. The man in charge of this establishment whispered to Chen Fan that this guy mutters to himself quite often. He glanced at Lin Xiaoyan. The man said some of the same words that Lin Xiaoyan said, if this old man had not sucked out his spiritual energy, he would never have been expelled. The man explained that he was saying something similar. Chen Fan asked the question without any emotion, is he crazy? Lin Xiaoyan stopped and felt something strange. Next to him, the atmosphere seemed to be covered with cracks. Suddenly, after a moment, a figure began to emerge from his body with small tentacles, similar to the outline of an old man. Lin Xiaoyan looked ahead in shock. The old man, looking at his hands in shock, shouted in panic that he had to run. The outline of the old man who flew out the window eventually disappeared into the atmosphere. Lin Xiaoyan looked at his hands and shouted joyfully that this parasite had left his body. With tears in his eyes, he shouted that the heavens had heard his prayers. He added that he could finally stop serving. Chen Fan reached out, trying to help Lin Xiaoyan stand up. He mentally asked the question why he suddenly began to scream and cry. He thought that he was poor and needed help. Lin Xiaoyan glanced at Chen Fan and guessed that he was the one who expelled this old man parasite from his body. He assumed that he must have seen his problem and helped him. Lin Xiaoyan began to bow and thanked him for his kindness with tears in his eyes. Chen Fan looked at him in shock and explained that he just wanted to pat him on the shoulder. He asked why he was falling to his knees. Chen Fan extended his hand to Lin Xiaoyan and told him to get up. Lin Xiaoyan looked at his hand with delight and mentally wondered why he didn't have the aura of a cultivator. He guessed he must be too strong and that's why he's hiding his powers. He added that he should not miss such a chance. Lin Dong angrily put his hands forward and shouted, He's a freak. He asked Chen Fan why he was helping him. He added that the Lin family would not recognize him now. Lin Xiaoyan gritted his teeth angrily and shouted at Lin Dong that he could insult him, but let him not insult others. Lin Dong said with a grin, the two idiots covering each other. He asked the question, so what will they do? Chen Fan comfortingly touched Lin Xiaoyan's shoulder and said that everything is fine and don't let him be angry. Lin Xiaoyan looked at his shoulder in shock, clenching his fists confidently. He thought that just one touch and he could already feel its power penetrating his body. A blue aura appeared around him, and he clenched his fists even more confidently, realizing that his spirit was growing. Blue's spiritual energy continued to branch out next to him. 
Lin Xiaoyan put his finger up and shouted at Lin Dong. He was defeated by him as a child and today he will lose again. He angrily added that Lin Dong would always be weaker. With great rage, Lin Dong swung his hand, which emitted a menacing yellow glow, and shouted for Lin Xiaoyan to die. Lin Xiaoyan punched Lin Dong back. Their two spiritual auras differed in color and power. Lin Dong asked in shock, what kind of power is this? He mentally asked how is this possible. Lin Dong opened his mouth in shock, beginning to worry greatly. At the same second, Lin Xiaoyan's field was pushed far away by Lin Dong. The Lin Dong girl opened her mouth in fear. Lin Xiaoyan took an attacking stance, waiting for his brother's further actions. The Lin Dong girl covered her mouth with her hands in undisguised fear. Lin Dong fell on the table and broke it. Chen Fan thought in his mind, was he just pretending to be weak? He mentally exclaimed, not believing his eyes, the cultivator working as a servant seemed to have gone crazy. Lin Xiaoyan looked at his hands in shock and exclaimed that his strength had returned. He again began to bow to Chen Fan and thank him for restoring his cultivation level. Chen Fan leaned towards him in surprise and mentally asked the question, is he not mocking him? Chen Fan put his finger on his head and asked him, did he hit his head? He explained that he was an ordinary mortal. He asked the question, how could he restore his cultivation level? Lin Xiaoyan dumbfoundedly asked in his mind, why does he call himself a mortal? Lin Dong and his girlfriend quietly ran away from this establishment. Lin Xiaoyan speculated by asking the question, perhaps he doesn't want to reveal himself. He decided that he would play along then. Suddenly, the owner of this establishment pulled Chen Fan aside, telling him that these were new dishes and that he should try them. Lin Xiaoyan clasped his hands together in respect and whispered gratitude to Chen Fan for his kindness that he would never forget. He added in a whisper that he couldn't pay him now, but when he became famous, he would forever be by his side. Chen Fan at this time approached the table on which there was a lot of food. Lin Xiaoyan began to run away from the establishment and exclaimed that for now he would return the thing that belonged to him. The man in charge of the tavern was pouring water into a bowl. He turned to Chen Fan, asking the question, does he have a lot of things with him because he is heading somewhere? Chen Fan replied while putting on the rice, he plans to find a clan to learn martial arts. The owner of the establishment smiled and said, with his skills, any sect will take him without refusal. Chen Fan mentally asked the question, maybe he was really worrying in vain and that stone was just broken. He picked up the bacon with two chopsticks and pulled it towards his mouth. The owner of the establishment suddenly said he heard that the Sacred Sound Clan was organizing tests. He added that if he met their requirements, he could study with them. Chen Fan jumped up from the table in shock and asked a question, really? He exclaimed that this is one of the three strongest clans. The tavern owner put his hands together and said, if he is taken there, then he can already be congratulated on his successful cultivation. Chen Fan began to eat the food very quickly and thought that there were the strongest soul stones there. He, biting off a piece of meat, thought that he had another chance. After some time, he left some coins on the table. The owner of the establishment took these coins and handed them back, shouting that they did not need to pay. He shouted at Chen Fan and told him to take the money back. Chen Fan waved his hand and shouted that he was going to this test. Some time later, in the central square of Kingxi, Dai Zhang, the blacksmith of Kingxi City, stood in the middle of the crowd and asked Chen Fan a question, will he take part in the test? Another guy standing in front turned around and exclaimed to go first. Zhao Zaiwachao, a resident of Kingxi City, exclaimed, with his knowledge and skills, he will easily pass this test and join the clan. He added that he is still a worthy person who is very kind and polite. Dai Zhang confirmed this and said that if he had not helped him with his business, he would have had to close the forge. Another guy standing behind them with his hand on his chin said thoughtfully, he taught the tavern owner how to cook, Dr. Chen in medicine, and helped him hone his craft skills. He exclaimed that Chen Fan had helped everyone in this city. Chen Fan noticed that there were a lot of people here. Zhao Ziaochao confirmed this and said with a bright smile, even those who cannot attend will see the quintessence of beauty. Chen Fan looked forward and noticed the figure of a girl in front of him. He mentally said, wow. The girl tucked her hair behind her ear and sat on the railing, carefully looking at the crowd. She had expressive bright eyes and snow white teeth. Chen Fan thought she was so beautiful that he didn't want anyone to look at her except him. It was King Yin, the daughter of the head of the Sacred Sound Clan. She looked around the crowd with a tenacious gaze and noticed that the guy was clearly different from the others. She saw that the residents looked at him with respect. 
King Yin concluded that he was not like everyone else. Chen Fan continued to look at her embarrassedly, feeling interest and sympathy for her. King Yin looked at him and pointed her finger and told him to come over. Chen Fan pointed a finger at himself in surprise and asked again, is he? King Yin confirmed this. Dai Zhang shouted encouragement for him to go forward. Zhao Zaya Chao exclaimed, who would have thought that he would be noticed in the crowd? He was proud of him. Dai Zhang put his hands on his hips and said that he had become a mentor to thousands of people in the city. He thought that Chen Fan would definitely become a great cultivator. The crowd clenched their fists in support and shouted for him to keep going. King Yin mentally asked a question, so he is very popular. She guessed by asking the question, local genius. She was curious. Chen Fan looked forward warily and mentally asked a question. This soul stone seemed to be the same, but was still different. He asked the question hopefully, did he have a chance? King Yin looked at him and commanded him to place his hands on the stone. Chen Fan agreed and said, okay. He thought that this time, oh he tried to concentrate on this situation and did not continue his thought. At the same moment, King Yin said with a tenacious gaze that he did not have a single drop of the spirit of a martial artist. She said he didn't have a chance, so let him go. The stone still continued to remain unchanged. King Yin looked at Chen Fan and mentally asked a question, so he turned out to be an ordinary guy. She looked at his retreating figure and thought she was sorry because she wanted to find a genius. Zhao Ziyachao shouted with encouragement to tell Chen Fan not to worry. He asked him a question. He doesn't have these powers and what's wrong with that? He said with support that he had trained them all. Chen Fan lowered his gaze sadly. Another guy from the crowd asked him a question. He wouldn't be a cultivator and so what? He exclaimed that let him stay with them in this city. Dai Zhang noticed that they had not talked to him for a long time. He asked him a question. Would he like to have a drink with him today? He exclaimed, let them try his new wine. A little while later. Jade Sword Clan. Council Hall. A gray-haired man walked around the hall worriedly. He asked anxiously, did Brother Yi tell the truth? He replied, taking a sip from his cup, of course. He asked why he should lie. The old man shouted indignantly to listen to himself. Has King Wu made a breakthrough? He asked in disbelief, the meat that helped him make a breakthrough. How can you believe this? Yi Jinghong calmly assured that this was true. The old man said with offense he thought that their clans were friends, but he dares to lie to him so brazenly. This hurts his heart. Yi Jinghong said that he also did not believe him before their meeting. He did not invite him here so as not to interfere with his travels. The old man sternly asked if he had heard the latest rumors. He slyly said that there was a treasure that could make any cultivator stronger. The old man then became curious, asking if Yi Jing Hong was hiding this. Yi Jing Hong indignantly asked what brother wants to say. The old man answered, woundedly, that it was nothing. He just wanted to congratulate him on the breakthrough, that's all. Yi Jing Hong realized with alarm that if the old man started spreading rumors that they had such a treasure, then all the clans would target them. He thought with excitement that he would really have to turn to the master again. He thanked the old man out loud and asked, asking a question, then maybe he wants to see the gentleman in person. Yi Jing Hong said that he would take him to him, but let him not say anything about cultivation. The old man beamed with joy and assured that, of course, let him lead. He angrily thought that he would watch Yi Jing Hong go far. He said that then he would take King Wu with him. She wanted to see the master again. The old man gloatingly decided that if this was the case, then when they passed by Kingxi, he would call Qin Ying with him. If Yi Jing Hong embarrasses himself in front of the younger generation, it will be real fun. After a while, they all flew together, standing on swords through the clouds. Qin Yin asked in surprise, is Yu Jing Hong telling the truth, or is it a lie? The old man replied that, of course, it was a lie. Let her look closely. Yu Jing Hong, descending from heaven to earth, reported that they had almost arrived. Then they will walk to show respect. The old man asked incomprehensibly, why? They can continue to fly. He and King Yin continued their flight. Yi Jing Hong shouted his name condemningly, King Potion. Yi King Wu asked in fear, what will they do? Yi Jing Hong resolutely shouted that they would follow them. If they offended the master, they would all be in trouble. Approaching the house where Chen Fan lived, King Potion mockingly asked, is this where the strongest lives? He doubtfully clarified who he wants to fool. Soaring in the air above the earth, he decided that he wanted to find out what this so-called gentleman was capable of. Yi Jing Hong, catching up with him, shouted for him to stop. Suddenly, bright lightning flashed in the sky and struck King Potion directly. He lost his balance and fell off his sword. King Tian asked in shock, what is this? 
Yi Jinghong and King Wu spread their hands in disbelief and looked at him. A huge ancient demonic ant appeared in front of King Potion and angrily shouted out the question, How dare these pathetic little people disrespect their master? He exclaimed, Let them die. King Tian realized in horror and asked, Is this the ancient demonic ant? He prayed for Brother Yi to help him. Yi Jing Hong and King Wu respectfully bowed down and told the Great One that they did not want to offend the strongest and moreover did not wish him harm. Let him at least save their lives. King Potion and King Yin looked at what was happening in amazement, not believing their eyes. The ancient demonic ant shouted furiously that it looked like it didn't respect its master. With these words, he grabbed King Potion. The legendary ancestor of all trees named Zhang Tian King shouted irritably that enough is enough. The ancient demonic ant indignantly informed the king emperor that they had broken in by force. Everyone asked in surprise Emperor King. They were stunned to think that in the entire continent, there was only one person with that name. And this is him. It was he who accomplished the impossible and was able to become emperor. But he died 90,000 years ago. Maybe they are just namesakes. Emperor King said that the sinners should wait for the arrival of the master. He would come up with a punishment for them. The ancient demonic ant became indignant and loomed over them intimidatingly, saying that a bunch of pathetic insects were not worth his attention. At this time, King Potion clung tightly to Yi Jing Hong in horror. He shouted furiously not to drag him with him. King Wu and King Yin cried in fear. Emperor King ordered the dragon vine to bind him. She obediently tied up the ancient demonic ant. He screamed hysterically for her to let him go. The vine replied to tell the ant to calm down. The owner is kind to all people and does not allow them to be killed. The ancient demonic ant shouted in amazement, asking why. He just gets rid of unnecessary people. With these words, he rose predatorily above the people and prepared to attack. Yi Jing Hong and King Potion looked at him in horror. Dragonvine asked indignantly, is it an ant again? She wrapped her stems around him and threw him away. The ant landed noisily on its back. Emperor King menacingly ordered him to stop. This is the last warning. The ant shook in fear. He looked angrily at the people and said that the owner would return soon if only they would say something and be dead. King Tian asked with regret, why didn't he listen to Brother Yi? A little while later, since he forged, when the two bowls of the drink met in the air, someone said that everyone in Kingxi respected him even if he couldn't cultivate. They owe him for his help. Chen Fan sadly thought that going against the will of heaven, standing shoulder to shoulder with real heroes, he never would have thought that this would be just a dream. Looking at his reflection in the bowl, he sighed sadly. Dai Zhang said with a smile that whatever he did, it was the right decision. Chen Fan noisily put the bowl on the table and said with enthusiasm that this is for sure. He always makes the right decisions. He will make geniuses out of them. Dai Zhang laughed and said that the gentleman was drunk and very drunk. They both picked up the bowls and decided that they would drink more. After a while, looking at the evening sky through the window, Chen Fan said that it was already late. It's time for him to go home. Dai Zhang asked cheerfully if he could stay overnight. Chen Fan imagined how they would both sleep in the same bed and resolutely refused, thanking him for the offer. Dai Zhang said with a smile as he wanted. Then he looked somewhere in shock and asked where this horse came from. She was stealing his bacon. At this time, the horse, chewing bacon, angrily thought that he himself was a horse, and his mother is also a horse. He is the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan. Dai Zhang, trying to take away the bacon from the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan, angrily shouted for the animal to let it go. He will not leave a living place on it. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan prince asked indignantly, this mortal dares to call him an animal. He looked at Chen Fan, who was holding a whip, preparing to hit him with it. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan prince mockingly thought that his back was very itchy, let him help him. At this moment, Chen Fan struck him with force with his whip. He fell, shedding tears of pain and resentment. Mentally, he wondered why it hurt so much to be hit by an ordinary mortal. Chen Fan noted that this was some kind of strange horse. Dai Zhang assumed that it was fate that they met. He asked hopefully if the master would take her with him. Dai Zhang added with a smile that if the master did not take him, the horse might steal his bacon again. Chen Fan agreed indifferently. Dai Zhang noticed that the horse was very happy that his master was taking him in. At this time, the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan Prince, shedding tears of rage and kicking, shouted many curses and insults at Chen Fan in horse language. Chen Fan, smiling, assumed that this must really be fate and decided to keep it for himself. The Prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan angrily thought that one more step and he would break his skull with his hoof. 
Chen Fan was already sitting happily on horseback, and the prince was perplexed when he realized that his legs were not moving. It was like he was crushed under a mountain. Chen Fan grabbed the horse's sides with his legs, waved his whip and shouted, but the horse rose up and neighed. Dai Zhang said to Dai Zhang, goodbye. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan asked doomedly, why does he need this? He sadly thought that it was okay, as soon as he regained his cultivation level, then Chen Fan would be a corpse. Carrying Chen Fan on his back, the prince inspected the area. Chen Fan was singing at this time, old vines, ancient trees, bony crows, small bridges and flowing water. The old road, the west wind was blowing at his back. The prince, feeling tired, asked why it seemed to him that he was getting heavier every second. Chen Fan sang happily, his faithful horse riding into the sunset. The horse swore and sadly said that he wanted to go home. Chen Fan sang that there was only sadness in the rider's heart. Looking towards his house, he asked in surprise, did he have guests? At this time, King Tian's eyes turned red and streams of blood flowed from her mouth. Yi Jing Hong asked anxiously, what's wrong? He replied that it seemed to him that all the insides had been ground into powder. King Wu excitedly said that the master is coming. Yi Jing Hong said anxiously, he might be angry that they brought them. Let him show respect. Yi King Wu waved her hand in a friendly manner and joyfully called his name. Behind her, Qin Yin grabbed King Potion's hands in anticipation. Yi Jing Hong looked at Chen Fan approaching with excitement. Qin Yin recognized him and thought in surprise, is it him? Chen Fan rode up to them on horseback and affably asked what brought them here. Yi Jing Hong replied, well, they came to him. Chen Fan saw Qin Ying and thought with excitement, isn't this the beauty from the city? She greeted him happily. He returned her greeting and asked in surprise how she got here. King Wu answered with a smile that this was her friend, her name was King Yin. She immediately introduced Mr. Chen, explaining that he had saved her. She is very grateful to him. She then pointed at the old man, saying that this was her father, King Potion. He laughed sheepishly, patting his head hesitantly. Chen Fan noticed that he was somewhat pale. He asked if he was sick. King Tian asked in amazement, did he call him you? Maybe he's laughing at him. How should he react? He did not know. Yi Jing Hong said that old man king should call him. He was tired after climbing here. Just rest a little and everything will be fine. Chen Fan suggested with a smile that they quickly go inside, where everyone can rest. In his mind, he thought that old man king was strong since his daughter was also a cultivator. They all entered the yard together, leaving the horse outside. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan said that now is his chance to escape from this idiot. At that moment, he felt a vine wrap around his neck and tell him that if he tried to escape, it would hang him by the neck. The prince asked in amazement, Dragon Vine. Suddenly, the ant made a mocking voice, saying that they had been brought new food. He added, you can consider it a dessert. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan prince asked dumbfounded, ancient demonic ant. What did he forget here? The prince screamed in horror. The vine, turning to the ant, said that the owner is here. She added that he should not start a slaughterhouse. Zhang Chiang King said menacingly, it's better to stay with them, otherwise. The prince exclaimed in amazement, Emperor King. Then he asked what kind of devilish place this was. Vine threw the horse over the fence and threw it to the ground. He, shedding tears of resentment, asked the question, where are there so many powerful creatures here? Then he sadly added that he had had enough. Some time later in the house, King Wu and Yi Jing Hong drank greedily from their bowls. King Potion looked at them indignantly, thinking that he had only poured tea, and they attacked as if they had not drunk anything for a week. What disrespect! King Yin enthusiastically told his father to try it quickly. King Potion nodded in agreement and took a sip. King Tian looked at the drink in his bowl with delight and thought that all his wounds were healed. He wondered if this was how the gentleman showed that he had forgiven him. King Yin, looking at Chen Fan, thought he was capable of destroying and healing. The Sir is really strong. He may be the strongest man she knows. Chen Fan happily said that they should sit and rest while he prepares dinner. When they have eaten, they can go home. Yi King Wu and Yi Jing Hong remembered the black hawk meat with delight, and they salivated with anticipation. King Potion objected that it's not worth it. The fact that they broke into his place is already disrespectful. At this moment, behind him, Yi King Wu and Yi Jing Hong were thinking angrily, let him let him cook for them to eat, or they will strangle him. King Yin said embarrassedly that everything was fine. They don't need anything, because they had enough tea. Chen Fan inquired, asking if they were maybe hungry. Yi Jing Hong thought angrily, how could anyone refuse? What a bald old man. 
Out loud, he sadly said that the old man was right. It was time for them to get ready. Og thought that it was already too late. Yi Qingwu said with a smile that they didn't want to cause him any more inconvenience. Mentally, she thought indignantly that she wanted to stay. She will do anything to stay. Chen Fan headed towards the exit and said, Then he will definitely treat them next time. Yi Qingwu and Yi Jing Hong thought sadly, asking the question, When will this next time be? King Potion and Qin Yin happily understood, The master wants them to come again. Chen Fan remembered that old man Yi had once given him a jade brooch. He needed to thank him. He said out loud that old man Yi should wait here for a while. He's got something going for him. Some time later, he handed over the tool and said that it was a homemade with his own hands. He asked if old man Yi wanted it, he could give it to him. Yi Jing Hong thought enthusiastically that this hoe would surpass any immortal rank weapon. He asked incredulously, can he really take this? King Tian thought angrily, what a lucky freak. King Yin delightedly thought that he was too generous. Chen Fan replied good-naturedly, let him just take it. Yi Jing Hong shed tears and said, thank him very much. He added that he really likes this hoe. Chen Fan thought happily, if the hoe moved him to tears, then he would give him something else later. Some time later, when evening was already approaching, Chen Fan waved goodbye and said, have a good trip. King Wu happily announced that they would definitely come again. Qin Yin waved goodbye to him and said goodbye with a smile. When they walked away, King Potion said enthusiastically, he asks to let him touch it, or at least smell it. He promises he won't steal it. Yi Jing Hong sternly replied that he should not even think about it. King Yin, trying to pull him away, asked her father to calm down. Yi Jing Hong shouted furiously, not only is he trying to steal his hoe, but he also refused the invitation to dinner. Yi King Wu angrily stated that they could eat and break through to a new stage. King Tian peacefully raised his palms up and said with a smile that he had already done a lot. He asked, how could he agree? King Yin said thoughtfully, this is true. A cup of tea that cleanses the soul, a picture that leads to other dimensions, and meat that can change the fate of any cultivator. King Potion was curious, maybe he still has some bits of meat left? Yi Jing Hong sternly replied that no. King Yin thought dreamily, so this is what he really is. She was interested and asked if she had a chance. As they walked further, King Potion asked to tell more about him. Yi Jing Hong replied when they returned home. King Yin asked, does the gentleman have a wife? Yi King Wu surprisingly asked what? The higher in the arena of the Jade Sword Clan. Yi King Wu, Yi Jing Hong, King Potion, and King Yin flew through the gray expanse of heaven on their swords. A moment later, they landed on the asphalt of the arena. Qin Hao stood in the middle of the arena, watching them appear, and waved his fan. With a smile, he said to Yi Jing Hong, he is finally back. Yi Jing Hong frowned in anger and furiously shouted his name, Qin Hao. Yi King Wu looked around and said in shock, their clan, but she was unable to continue her thought due to extreme excitement and disappointment. A blue aura appeared next to Yi Jing Hong, signaling his anger. He shouted that he would tear his head off. Yi King Wu reached out her hand to her father and called out to him. Qin Hao said with a perky smile, how arrogant, he folded his fan. Green energy appeared next to him, from which a bird of prey appeared, flying towards Yi Jing Hong. Yi King Wu screamed desperately and tried to cover herself with her hands. An orange glow emanated from her, which she tried to protect. Qin Hao grinned and placed a folded fan on his face, saying that they were not his opponents. He ordered them to kneel and surrender. A bird of prey with red eyes flapped its wings menacingly, raising dust and pieces of earth into the air. Yi Jing Hong asked with a murderous look, does he want to kill him? He looked at the toothpick hanging over his hand. He swung it and shouted that it wouldn't be that easy. Qin Hao asked him a question, has he gone crazy? How can you kill it with a regular toothpick? The toothpick glowed with a bright golden light. Qin Hao warily and confused asked the question, what is this feeling? He exclaimed the question in disbelief, is this a first-class quality weapon? The toothpick pierced the bird of prey at full speed. At the same moment, rays of bright light appeared from the bird's body. Qin Hao looked back at this in shock and shouted the question, how is this possible? At the same moment, another toothpick pierced him. Qin Hao dropped the fan from his hands. Blood poured from his mouth due to his vital organs being hit. It began to fall down to where Yi Jing Hong was, emitting the same golden aura as a toothpick. King Potion asked with delight, where did Yi Jing Hong get such a toothpick? He tried to guess where it came from, but didn't finish his thought. Yi King Wu exhaled a sigh of relief and leaned her elbows on her knees. King Yin covered her mouth with her hand in shock, not believing that this could happen. 
Yi Jing Hong grinned smugly, toothpicks still hanging over his hand. Suddenly, a scarlet glow appeared behind him, from which a dark figure in a cloak smoothly emerged. The dark figure said, so they had the Taoist treasure. Everyone present in the arena looked up in shock, where a dark figure emerged from the scarlet glow. Yi King Wu asked with fear, who is this? King Potion exclaimed, he is at the peak of development. King Yin clenched her fists and asked the question, where are there such strong people in their lands? The messenger gave them a choice, they surrender or die. A dangerous red glow came from his hand. Yi Jing Hong shouted the question furiously, so is he behind the monster attacks. He raised his hand to strike and shouted that he was the head of the Jade Sword. He will never bow down to him. The messenger took the handle of the ball and shouted that he was stupid. The envoy swung his zigzag sword and took an attack stance. Yi Jing Hong asked the question with excitement, is the weapon top-notch quality? King Potion shouted to him that it was all over and they were finished. Yi Jing Hong reached his hand towards the sword and shouted, all or nothing. The messenger, swinging his sword again, from which an attack followed in a red wave, shouted for him to die. Yi Jing Hong asked a dumbfounded question, sweating with excitement. Is this Ho absorbing all his spiritual energy, and that's not enough? His weapon glowed a bright blue. He swung it and shouted that his spiritual energy was not enough. He shouted for King Tian to help him. King Potion, Yi King Wu, and King Yin ran towards him to help with energy. A bright blue glow emanated in all directions, defeating the red aura. At the same moment, cracks appeared in the red aura, and soon it broke into small particles. The messenger mentally asked a question, Ho. He asked again in his mind, what is this? He looked at the Ho in shock and mentally asked, is this a weapon of immortal rank? The Ho was illuminated with an even brighter blue light. Yi Jing Hong, Yi King Wu, King Yin, and King Potion raised their arms forward in victory, still holding the Ho in the air. Yi Jing Hong shouted at the messenger to die. The messenger doomedly put his hands forward, trying to defend himself. He shouted, no. Suddenly, the Ho slammed into his body, cutting him in half. Yi Jing Hong leaned his hands on the ground, exhausted from lack of strength, and said that it was close. Yi King Wu added, they were lucky to have the master's treasure. At this time, the Ho flew back at high speed. King Yin looked at this in fear. The Ho stuck into the ground with all its might. Yi Jing Hong looked at this and said excitedly at the right moment. He took the hoe and began to kiss it, shouting that their master had provided for everything. Yi King Wu asked dumbfounded, did he foresee an attack? King Yin and King Potion silently watched this situation without saying a word. Yi Jing Hong smugly threw the hoe over his shoulder and said, the toothpick and hoe that the master gave them helped them overcome this crisis. He exclaimed, there is definitely some hidden meaning here. King Yin and Yi King Wu listened to this in shock. King Potion asked dumbfoundedly, what is the hidden meaning? Yi Jing Hong grabbed the hoe with both hands and shouted, The Lord wants him to cultivate under these skies and cultivate all living beings. Yi King Wu, King Yin, and King Potion covered their hands from the bright light emanating from the hoe. Yi Jing Hong explained, The master uses both heaven and earth as a chessboard. He added that he used all living beings as pawns. Yi Jing Hong imagined Chen Fan sitting in the air and controlling pawns on an invisible chessboard. He exclaimed that they were all different figures in his party. Yi Jing Hong added, he was very lucky to become his pawn. He imagined himself hugging the two fingers of Chen Fan, who was trying to rearrange the pawns on the chessboard. Yi King Wu interrupted his reverie and asked a question, what about her? She can become his pawn. Yi Jing Hong ran his hand over his mustache dreamily. King Yin also asked a question hopefully, what about her? She exclaimed that she was also with them and let them not forget her. King Potion hugged Yi Jing Hong's knee and shouted to him not to forget about his family. Yi Jing Hong angrily asked them a question, do they think it is so easy to be a pawn master? He exclaimed that they are still not ready now. He added that they should not worry. If they continue to work hard, sooner or later, he will recognize them too. King Tian continued to hug his leg and shouted with tears in his eyes that he was still too weak. King Yin insisted at the same time, she will become better and become a worthy pawn of the master. Yi King Wu clenched her fists purposefully and declared that she would take her place next to the master. Yi Jing Hong shouted, since the master wants him to cultivate all living beings, then they will start with the Hundred Beast Clan. He purposefully shouted, what kind of gentleman is this? The Hundred Beast class was located across the long and lingering mountains. The roof of the clan appeared through the gap between the mountains. Xiaoyao flew next to the roof of Chen Fan's house, flapping his wings powerfully. The horse exhaled angrily and said in horse language that he was the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan. 
He asked Chen Fan a question, and he treats him like this. Chen Fan straightened the saddle pad with his hand and, pulling back the rope, began tying the horse to the fence. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan swung his hoof and said in irritation in the horse's voice, let him prepare to be hoofed. The vine, the ant, and Jang Tian King glared at him angrily, scorching with their crimson gaze. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan shouted in fear for them to relax. He nervously began to twitch his hooves and added that he just wanted to warm up. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan let out a resigned sigh. Tears of despair flowed from his eyes. Chen Fan took him by the bridle and said, He is not going to leave the idol, so the horse will plow, literally. After some time, the dragon prince was plowing the ground with a plow. He, not believing it himself, said that some dragons rule the seas, devour continents, and he, but his thought was cut short. He immediately desperately asked questions. How did he get to this point? The prince of the dragon clan thought doomedly that he wanted to go to his mother. Suddenly he noticed some kind of golden glow behind him. The horse turned and asked again, Taoist symbols. The plow had Taoist symbols. The horse shouted in embarrassment, how convenient. He added that his wounds are healing and his strength is returning to him. The prince of the dragon clan began to jump faster with delight. Chen Fan asked a question in shock, does he have rabies? He asked what was wrong with him. The prince of the dragon clan continued to run across the field at high speed, completely plowing it up. Chen Fan asked a question, maybe he was a cow in a past life. The prince of the dragon clan exclaimed passionately that no cow could compare with him. Chen Fan came to terms with this and suggested that maybe the horse likes it, but it doesn't work out for him because he doesn't have enough strength to plow the land. The prince of the dragon clan stopped indignantly. Baring his teeth, he shouted, no. Raising his hooves up, he exclaimed that he could. He is strong. He added to make Chen Fan look at him. The prince of the dragon clan exclaimed that he needed to eat. Then he will get fat. He suggested that he might not like grass, but he should gain weight. The horse will do anything to plow the land here. The prince of the dragon clan began to eat the grass at a fast speed. Chen Fan suggested that the horse was easy to raise. He should thank Dai Zhang for giving him this horse. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan continued to chew grass animatedly. Suddenly he shouted that this taste and spiritual energy. He immediately shouted that there was more of this here than in precious nectar once every ten hours. He exclaimed that this is immortal grass. Xiaobai walked up to Chen Fan and barked welcomingly. Chen Fan asked in surprise, are there guests again? He told the horse that if he plows this field, he will feed him green grass. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan asked in surprise as he continued to chew the grass, green grass. He shouted hopefully that he had to plow. He must show the master that the best dragon plows all the fields. Xiaoyao floated in the sky, watching the horse. The horse shouted, he wanted to say that he was a horse. He claimed to be the best plower. The prince of the dragon clan bent down to the ground and exclaimed that only he would get all the grass. Xiaoyao asked in surprise, has the horse gone crazy? After a while, Chen Fan said, so it's them. Yi Jing Hong asked him a question, did they disturb him? Chen Fan replied with a smile, he doesn't have much work to do today other than plowing the field. Yi Jing Hong thought, by plowing fields, he must mean cultivation. He was right. Yi King Wu was stunned and thought that the gentleman was amazing. She should become his pawn and help him plow the fields. Chen Fan asked them a question, why did they all come together? He asked if something happened to them. Yi Jing Hong bowed respectfully and said, the hoe he gave him a couple of days ago is simply beautiful. He came here to thank him. Chen Fan embarrassedly ran his hand through his hair and said that this was an ordinary hoe. He added that he did not need to be thanked for this. Chen Fan thought in his mind that they were so friendly and well-mannered. He thought it was very cute. Chen Fan thought about it and imagined hugging Yi King Wu. He awkwardly rubbed the back of his head and mentally thought that this would be nice. Yi King Wu turned to him and explained that on the way they met a rabbit. She asked if he wanted to take a look. She had a small curled up rabbit in her arms. Chen Fan exclaimed enthusiastically, of course. Yi Jing Hong smiled contentedly and thought, so did he understand that this was the ancient divine beast, the Jade Rabbit. Chen Fan looked at the rabbit in love and thought about rabbit barbecue. He suggested that the rabbit must be tasty. Yi King Wu thought that the rabbit was very cute. She touched her hands to her face with emotion and asked the question, who wouldn't love such a rabbit? Chen Fan said he wanted to catch some small animals for breeding, and they just brought him one. He thanked them. He stroked the rabbit's head with gentle movements and thought that it was so fluffy. Chen Fan immediately mentally assumed that it would make a good mitten or glove. 
Yi King Wu leaned on her knees and said that the rabbit was very obedient and would not run away. She mentally asked the question, maybe this is a hint at their future relationship. Chen Fan placed the rabbit on the ground while continuing to stroke its head. The rabbit mentally exclaimed not to touch him there. He mentally added that it would feel too good on his head. He continued to lie on the ground with pleasure while others went deeper into the garden. Xiaobai approached the hare and said that he smelled something tasty. The hare exclaimed in shock that the dog should not come near him. Suddenly a vine grabbed the hare and told him to be careful. The hare asked in fear what was happening. Zhang Tian King looked at the hare with a gloomy expression. The hare shouted in fear, a tree with a face. Zhang Tian King confirmed this and asked the question, so what? The vine continued to squeeze the hare tightly, not letting him move. Suddenly, the hare noticed a huge ant at the top of the tree and started crying in fear. Xiaoyao flew over the hare and observed this situation. The ant said, another rival. The hare mentally asked the question, who is he? He lay down doomedly on the ground and again mentally asked where he was. He was scared. Meanwhile, in the backyard kitchen, Chen Fan held a huge tray in his hands and asked the question if they would like to share a meal with him if they came here. King Yin and Yi King Wu enthusiastically shouted to him that they would help clean up the ingredients. The girls picked up the tray of food and carried it. Chen Fan looked at them in surprise, spreading his arms to the sides. King Potion pulled up the sleeves of his sari and exclaimed that he would prepare it. Yi Jing Hong exclaimed as he held the tree sticks in his hands that he was the one in charge of lighting the fire. Chen Fan thought in surprise that this is a very friendly family. He turned to King Potion and told him to be careful because the knife was sharp. King Potion looked enthusiastically at the kitchen knife shining with blue flames and exclaimed, This is a legendary weapon. Chen Fan turned to Yi Jing Hong and said that he should use a lighter for fire. He just had to press a button. King Potion looked at the green lighter with delight. Yi Jing Hong pressed the lighter and a flame immediately appeared. He exclaimed, This is a secret flame that can make entire seas boil. King Potion looked at the blazing flames in shock. Chen Fan watched King Potion and Yi Jing Hong in surprise and thought that great warriors were walking on this continent. He mentally asked, Are they surprised by the fire from a lighter? King Yin and Yi King Wu looked at the water in shock and noticed a huge flow of spiritual energy. They said in surprise that this water was a thousand times purer than the water of the Holy Spring. They thought that one sip would give them peace of mind for one month. King Yin and Yi King Wu dipped their hands into the water and felt a stream of spiritual energy flow through their bodies. Yi King Wu tasted a drop of water and another huge stream of powerful spiritual energy passed through it. Yi King Wu and King Yin held hands and knelt down. Chen Fan coughed awkwardly and apologized for interrupting them. King Yin and Yi King Wu looked at him in surprise. They thought he had caught them. Now he will be angry with them. Chen Fan put his hand to his head and thought that the locals were really strange here. He told them that the two of them could make tea for now. Half an hour later, vegetables were fried in a frying pan with a good amount of oil poured into it. Chen Fan continued to lift the pan, stirring the vegetables in it. It smelled good. This dish had a rich taste. King Yin and Yi King Wu held plates in their hands, sometimes serving it to Chen Fan who was cooking. King Potion and Yi Jing Hong watched in shock as he cooked. Chen Fan picked up the plate and looked at it carefully. Yi King Wu clenched her fists in shock and exclaimed this, some time later. Outside, the sun had long since disappeared behind the horizon. The stars gradually began to shine brightly on the surface of the sky. The dishes were well washed and stood on the table. Yi King Wu said that they did not need to be escorted. King Yin added that they had already disturbed him a lot. King Potion continued to look in love at the kitchen knife, shining with Taoist symbols. Yi Jing Hong angrily asked him what he was doing. Chen Fan opened his eyes in shock as he watched this. He awkwardly said, since he likes it so much, then let him take it. King Tian began to cry in surprise and addressed him by name. Yi Jing Hong gave him an indignant look. King Tian took the kitchen knife in his hands and exclaimed that he was very touched and would never forget his kindness. Chen Fan put his hands forward in a conciliatory manner, jumping to the side away from the knife, and exclaimed the question, What's so and so? He thought that if the girls brought him a rabbit, then they too should be thanked. After a while, he awkwardly scratched the back of his head and extended his hands to King Ying and Yi King Wu, saying that these two scarves were for them. Yi King Wu heard that death does not give scarves to those it loves. King Yin wondered if the gentleman really gave him his handkerchief. 
Yi King Wu thought with confidence that the master was showing her his intentions. King Yin mentally asked the question, does he like her? She exclaimed, since she has a chance, she will not give up. Yi King Wu clutched the handkerchief and thanked the master. She added that her scarf had just torn. King Yin said with gratitude that this scarf is simply beautiful. She is very happy. Chen Fan said in surprise, they are so happy with an ordinary scarf. He added that they became cultivators, but there was practically nothing behind their souls. Meanwhile, in the yard the hare was sleeping restlessly. Suddenly, a shining blue butterfly flew towards him. The hare opened his eyes in fear and shouted that he had to run. He jumped up from the ground and crashed into something with all his strength. It was Chen Fan's leg. The rabbit shouted, continuing to cry desperately, that he could not stay here or he would be eaten by these monsters. He began to jump, trying to run away from this yard. Chen Fan grabbed him by the skin and asked the question, what is he doing? The hare, desperately continuing to cry, thought that he did not want to be eaten. Chen Fan looked at him with a smile and announced that it happened and he was still hungry. He asked a question, could he cook rice with rabbit meat? He asked the hare if he had any last words. The hare exclaimed doomedly, pressing his paws to his mouth, that he was just a harmless rabbit. Chen Fan concluded that the rabbit was definitely rabid. Suddenly, the hare hugged him by the hand and, continuing to cry desperately, held on tightly to him with his paws. Chen Fan mentally asked the question, why did he suddenly become so cute? He thought he couldn't do that. After some time, he took out a box of medicine. Taking the bandage in his hands, Chen Fan turned to the hare and said, the next time he tries to kill himself, he will not help him. He tied the hare's head with a bandage. The hare looked at him in surprise and mentally asked the question, is he treating him? The hare noticed that Chen Fan is very kind. Chen Fan patted the hare's head, saying that he was finished. He thought that now he would go and see how the horse was there. The hare, beginning to blaze with golden color, asked his mother a question, was it really her spirit that brought him to him? Instead of a little hare, there was a little girl with bunny ears sitting on the table who continued to cry. She pitifully wiped away her tears and said that she missed her mother. Chen Fan, eyes wide open in surprise, cursed. Looking around, he exclaimed in amazement that this horse had plowed everything here. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon clan lay wearily at the end of the field and thought with despair that he had to prove to his owner that he could not only plow, but also that he could ride it. Chen Fan was shocked to see how the horse, lying on its side, plucked grass with its tongue. He was indignant that he still continued to eat. He asked a question, does he want to burst? Then, after feeling the horse's huge belly, Chen Fan excitedly ordered Xiaobai to bring a first aid kit, a raven caught in the night sky. After some time, Chen Fan poured green liquid from a glass into the horse's mouth and ordered him to drink it. He said that he made this laxative himself, which would cleanse him. Xiaobai thought mockingly as he asked the question, he should plow the land, but he wants to be the owner's personal horse? He mentally added that he was asking a lot. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan Prince shouted in shock, no, clear liquid gushed from his eyes and nostrils. The horse flew up above the ground with a scream and noisily relieved itself. Chen Fan and Xiaobai ran away in fear in different directions, anxiously warning each other of the danger. The horse landed with a crash, face down on the ground, vexedly asking the question, why? In despair, he asked the question, is he not worthy to be his horse? Xiaobai instructively replied that everyone must know their place, or else a butcher's knife will be waiting for them. Let the horse not forget where his place is. The horse sadly asked, what place does the dog's brother have? He thought for a moment and proudly replied that he was the master's personal dog. The horse admired and said with envy that he wanted it too. The next day at the Jade Sword Clan, Yi King Wu and King Yin excitedly said in one voice that they wanted it too. King Potion proudly said that the master gave him his kitchen knife, now he is also worthy of being his pawn. Yi Jing Hong explained that the master gave him a hoe so that he could cultivate everything that came in his way. Vegetables and fruits begin to grow on the land treated with this tool. This must be cut, which means the master wants him to follow him, cutting everything that gets in their way. Yi King Wu embarrassedly asked her father, what does this scarf mean? She held it tenderly in her hands. He replied that this scarf is made of sunlight. This is a metaphor for Taoist Hoyan. Yi Jing Hong summed up that the master wants them to find the place of his death and get this treasure. King Wu asked in bewilderment why he needed this treasure if he was already so strong. At this time, King Yin held her handkerchief to her chest with trepidation. Yi Jing Hong angrily shouted that she was a fool. This is a test. If she doesn't find the treasure, she won't be worthy of becoming his pawn. 
Yi King Wu resolutely assured that she was ready to do anything for this and would definitely find this treasure. Yi Jing Hong praised her. King Yin looked at her scarf with delight and thought, she doesn't understand what the music depicted on it means. She suggested that this was perfect harmony, a harmonious relationship. King Yin dreamily imagined herself in the tender embrace of Chen Fan, who looked at her with love. She shyly pressed the handkerchief to her lips. Suddenly, King Yin exclaimed in surprise head. On the threshold stood a man who, bowing with respect, said that the third princess would arrive in three days. They are invited to meet her. Yi Jing Hong indifferently ordered him to answer her that he did not have time. The man on the threshold was very surprised and obediently said yes. King Ying retorted anxiously that the third princess was very powerful. Her invitation should not be rejected. King Wu anxiously said that she was the daughter of the empress and the emperor's favorite. They should definitely meet her. Yi Jing Hong replied irritably that this was a complete waste of time. Now they are pawns of the master and serve only him. He added that she was just a princess. Even if the empress herself came, they still wouldn't come. If she doesn't like something, let her talk to his hoe. King Tian raised his thumb up in approval and added with a smile and with his knife. Yi King Wu and King Yin said at the same time that they had gone crazy. A little while later. Backyard. The huge moon illuminated everything around. Someone said what a stinking horse. Chen Fan saw something in the grass. When he came closer, he was amazed to see that a wounded blonde girl was lying there. He asked the question, where did it come from? A little while later. Through the bars of the bed one could see the moon and stars in the dark sky. Chen Fan treated the wounds on the girl's body and was indignant at who abused this child like that. The girl moaned in pain. When she opened her eyes, she saw tears on Chen Fan's cheeks. She thought with surprise, asking the question, is the owner crying because of her? Then I remembered Xiaobai's words. He said that the owner was only pretending to be mortal in order to experience all the joys and sorrows of ordinary people. If she pretended to be a little girl who was bullied, he would feel sorry for her and would definitely accept her. The girl clenched her fist with alarm and thought, the owner understood for sure that she was only pretending, but did not show it. He tempers his mind, but she can't even really help him. She's still too young. Chen Fan, wiping his tears, admitted that he had not cried so much for a long time. The girl reminded him of his sister from Earth. I wonder how she's doing. The girl opened her eyes and sat up in bed. She asked a question, sister. Does the owner have a sister? What kind of Earth is this? Chen Fan filled his palms with water, then looked at his reflection in it. He heard the voice of a girl who asked, did he save her? Chen Fan turned around and saw a girl standing nearby. She told him thank you. He stroked her head and asked, did your sister wake up? Nothing hurts? She answered with delight that nothing hurt. She then said thank him and called him brother. Chen Fan asked a question, what is her name? How did she get here? The girl replied that her name was Zio Kai. She was kidnapped and wanted to be sold in the city of Kingxi by slave traders, but she managed to escape. She ran and ran until she saw a house on the mountain and decided to run there. Then she lost consciousness. Chen Fan asked where is her family. Zio Kai answered sadly that her mother died and she had never seen her father. Chen Fan realized that she was also left alone in this world. He patted her head again. Zio Kai was shaking all over. He said that if she had no other relatives, he could take care of her. Chen Fan asked with a smile, maybe Zio Kai will stay here and be his younger sister. The girl, feeling a sense of shame, thought, asking the question, did she succeed? She joyfully threw herself into his arms and happily screamed that yes, now he is her brother. No one will make fun of her anymore. Chen Fan gently stroked her head and asked her to stay here for now. He will go get some fabric and make her new clothes. A little while later. Threading the needle, he said approvingly, that's it. Then, taking it in his hand, he activated the god of sewing and god of tailor skills and began to sew passionately. Zio Kei, watching him, thought with delight, asking the question, is this how he sews clothes? Sometime later, Chen Fan handed her clothes and shoes and told her to try them on. Just don't judge harshly. Zio Kai thought that even though the owner was pretending, she kept saying thank you to him. She looked at the clothes and shoes with delight and thought that these were the most powerful clothes in the whole world. When she put on a beautiful new dress and shoes, she admitted that she had never seen such shoes. Chen Fan said that these were sneakers. She was delighted to feel the aura constantly making her stronger. She thought that now she won't have to cultivate. Chen Fan inquired, asking the question, does she like it? 
She answered with delight that yes. Zio Kai said with emotion that he was the first person after her mother to sew clothes for her. She thanked her brother. Chen Fan sadly thought that she had to go through a lot if she was so happy about an ordinary dress. He decided that he would now take care of her. Over time, backyard, as the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan lay on the ground in front of a stinking pile of dung. Xiaobai said that a farm animal cannot become the owner's personal horse. He added, everyone has their place. The horse sadly asked Xiaobai to forgive him. Xiaobai replied that he was an ordinary house dog, and the golden raven was an ordinary bird. Zhang Tian King is an ordinary tree, the dragon vine is a swing, and the ancient demonic ant is a parasite. The ant got angry and shouted that he was not a parasite. It can help the owner cultivate the land. Xiaobai asked mockingly, he is just an ant. How can he cultivate the soil? An idea struck the ant. He grabbed a pile of dung and said that dragon feces are the best fertilizer. This will make the earth better. He quickly carried it away. Xiaobai thought indignantly that the owner was pretending to be mortal and this land was very important to him. It is impossible for an ant to take all the laurels for itself. He asked angrily, chasing the ant, what was he doing? Where is his work ethic? He's stealing his plan. The ant replied, stop talking. Whoever is faster is worthy. The horse wanted to object, but Xiaoyao said irritably that he only eats and goes to the toilet. Nothing more is required from him. Then he was struck by lightning. The horse shouted an angry curse. Some time later, two pairs of legs walked along the grass. Chen Fan and Xiao Kai walked together holding hands. Xiao Bai jumped with his paws on the horse's belly and mockingly forced him to eat. Xiaoniao, hitting his face with his wing, went to the toilet. The horse responded with tears that he also wanted to help. Chen Fan strictly ordered them to stop abusing the horse. Xiao Kai thought in surprise as she asked, Is this a horse? It's a dragon. She realized that she had to continue to pretend and not stand out. The dog and the raven joyfully rushed towards their owner. He kicked them aside with disgust and shouted at them to stay away. They're all covered in horse manure. Xiaobai and Xianiao flew to the side. The horse maliciously thought that this was karma. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan prince mentally asked Xiao Kai, she won't eat his grass. She mentally replied that she was eating delicious dishes prepared by the owner. The horse thought with delight, wow. Then he mentally asked, will she bear it with him? Chen Fan asked in surprise, Xiao Bai used manure as fertilizer? Xiao Bai wagged his tail happily. The ant angrily said that it was his idea. He's the smartest one here. Chen Fan, covering Xiao Kai with himself, shouted in shock, what a huge ant. The shadow of a boot was approaching the ant. He asked in horror why. He realized that he was finished a little while later. Chen Fan thought excitedly that rabbits were so cute and raised a knife over him. The pink rabbit was terrified. He then added that especially when cooked with spices. At the moment, when Chen Fan raised his leg over the ant, Xiao Kai sat down on the ground and sobbed in fear. He hesitated, looking at her. At this time, the ant quickly ran away and said, Thank you for saving his life. Chen Fan asked anxiously, Is something wrong? She, wiping her tears, did not answer. She thought that she couldn't say because she was afraid that he might get angry. Xiao Kai said in fear that this ant was also lost. He's unhappy. His parents are probably already looking for him. Chen Fan suggested wistfully that she missed her family. He might have to find these slavers and punish them. He asked her out loud not to cry and gently wiped her tears with his hand. Chen Fan said tenderly that this is now her home, this is her new family. Xiao Kai hugged him with tears of happiness and promised that she would not cry anymore. She happily said that now she has a brother. A few days later, Xiao Kai pointed at Xiao Bai and said that she was afraid of dogs. Xiao Bai tensed. Chen Fan told her not to be afraid and assured her that Xiao Bai was trained. Then, passing by the raven, she slyly said that the feathers of that bird were so beautiful, you can make a shuttlecock out of them, then they can play together. Xiao Niao opened his beak in amazement. After a while, the bald raven wiped away his tears with his wing. Xiao Kai, seeing the vine, said that she was tired and wanted to swing. Chen Fan agreed good-naturedly and said that he would pick her up now. Dragon Vine was scared. Sometime later, when the sun was already setting, Chen Fan called Xiao Kai for dinner. Xiao Niao looked after them with tears. When Chen Fan carried Xiao Kai in his arms, she sarcastically stuck her tongue out at everyone over his shoulder and made a grimace. She proudly thought that they were just his pathetic animals, and she was his little sister. While she rejoiced, the animals grieved. 
Xiobai said angrily that she shouldn't have suggested a way to get closer to the owner. At this time, everyone looked at him angrily. The vine hit Xiobai and shouted angrily, so he taught her. Then Xiaoyao and the ant also began to hit him. A little while later, day, Jade Sword Clan. Someone informed the head that the third princess had arrived on the mainland and was furious when she learned that they would not be welcoming her. He replied that he should not pay attention. The man said that the fifth prince of the Zhuo kingdom wants to see him. Yi Jing Hong inquired, asking why he was here. Their kingdom is close, and they often quarrel. He asked if the prince was planning to annex their lands. After some time, a magical vortex appeared around Yi Jing Hong. The fifth prince Liang Kang and the evil demon Kai Xinghai appeared before him. Liang Kang said indignantly, How arrogant this is. Why hasn't Chief Yi met him yet? Liang Kang, he also killed their loyal subject, and now let him explain. Yi Jing Hong asked sternly, so they were the ones behind the Hundred Beast Clan's attacks. Liang Kang replied, their strength has been developing for many years. Yi Jing Hong destroyed them, now let him prepare to pay. Kai Xinghai threateningly told the prince that he would deal with this old man. Liang Kang replied that of course, he was asking him about it. As the evil demon prepared to attack, Yi Jing Hong realized that he was one of the ten strongest residents of the Zhuo realm, the evil demon Kai Xinghai. Something flashed behind him and a scream was heard, no, he will be his opponent. Kai Xinghai asked angrily, who? King Potion jumped up, kicked him in the head and replied that with a kitchen knife in his hands, he would shred anyone who went against them. He added that he was King Potion's grandfather. Kai Xinghai cursed angrily. Yi Jing Hong said in disappointment that he had stolen his chance to shine. At this time, the third princess approached the palace. Zhao Lingjai asked displeasedly, she had already come to the clan building, but he still hadn't met her. The dark-haired girl next to her replied that the fact of their rebellion was obvious. Yin Ziu helpfully suggested that her highness let her go up to them and punish them. Suddenly, the third princess heard something above and, looking up, saw someone flying down. She shouted a warning, be careful. Lying on the ground, all wounded, was Kai Xinghai. The third princess examined him and saw the aura and symbols of the Tao. Xiao Lingzhai and Yin Ziu were surprised to realize that this was a spiritual weapon. Jumping from above, King Potion and Yi Jing Hong landed pathetically in front of them. Had Yi asked in surprise, is this the third princess and Lady Yin? He then asked with a smile, didn't they scare them too much? King Potion and Yi Jing Hong menacingly held their spiritual weapons on their shoulders, proudly towering over the defeated evil demon. Zhao Lingzhai, searching for the right words, thought in bewilderment, Ho, kitchen knife. She mentally asked the question, what kind of weapons are these? Yi Jing Hong folded his hands in respect and said, if they came here to find Taoist Hoyan's treasure with them, then they would be disappointed. The third princess asked, what does this mean? He replied that they did not have this, but they had joined the master to become his faithful servants. With these words, Yi Jing Hong and King Potion proudly displayed their spiritual weapons. Yi Jing Hong then revealed that it was he who gave it to them. Xiao Lingzhai thought hopefully, if the gentleman is so generous, then maybe this is a great chance. She took a step towards Head E and humbly asked him to introduce her to him. She added that she would repay his kindness. A little while later, Kingsi City. The merchant was inviting customers, shouting, Rolls, fresh and hot baked goods. The spirit of an old man flew along the street and thought in surprise he did not expect to meet such a powerful hermit. He decided that now he needed to act more carefully. Looking at the baby, he thought that while Chen Fan was gone, he needed to find a suitable body, because in this state he would not last more than three days. The elder looked to the side and asked in surprise, what is this? Dai Zhang carefully sharpened the knife. The elder thought in amazement, asking the question, does an ordinary mortal have such a strong aura? He gloatingly decided that this body would be a hundred times better than all his previous bodies. He laughed and happily walked towards Dai Zhang, deciding that he would take over. As soon as he approached, he saw Chen Fan carrying pots in his hands, smiling cheerfully. The elder fearfully asked the question, what? Him again? Dai Zhang greeted the master warmly. Chen Fan said that he wanted to ask him for something, so he brought him a small gift. The old man flew away in horror. Dai Zhang responded in amazement that he shouldn't have. If the gentleman wants something, he can simply ask. He added that he would solve his problems as if they were his own. At this time, the elder entered the blue portal and disappeared. Chen Fan said that a group of slave traders passed through the city. He then inquired, asking if Dai Zhang would help him find out about them. If he catches them, it will be even better. 
He replied that he should relax and rely on him. Chen Fan thanked him and asked what he was doing. Dai Zhang replied that he was going to stab Da Shan. Chen Fan asked in surprise, Da Shan served him faithfully. Why did he decide to slaughter him? Someone told them to stop. Then he asked in surprise, did he possess an alpaca? Da Shan screamed, this meant that he was not an alpaca. He is the great emperor of medicine. He screamed for them to free him. Dai Zhang assumed that he was sick, but he could not cure him. He doesn't want Da Shan to suffer any longer. Dai Zhang sadly said that he would give him a quick death. The great emperor of medicine in the body of an alpaca screamed in horror that he would be killed. Everyone could only hear the alpaca's plaintive bleeding. Chen Fan, after examining Da Shan, activated the vet god skill and reported that he was not sick. Dai Zhang asked with relief, was he wrong? Chen Fan said with a smile, let him untie him, he will examine him. Da Shan happily said words of gratitude to the master for saving his life. He asked Chen Fan to accept him as his faithful slave. He began to bow obediently. Dai Zhang, pointing his finger at Da Shan in surprise, said that he was grateful that the master saved his life. Chen Fan widened his eyes in shock and mentally asked if the alpaca was overacting too much. Dai Zhang suggested, asking a question in animal language, maybe then he could take it for himself. Chen Fan raised his hands up in denial and said that he was looking for a mount. He was afraid that the alpaca wouldn't cope. Da Shan affectionately bit his leg, thus attracting attention. When Chen Fan looked at him, he showed with all his appearance that he was the best mount on the mainland. Dai Zhang assured that Da Shan is a strong alpaca, he can carry him without any problems. Chen Fan patted the alpaca's head and admitted that it does look tough, but isn't it too weird to ride it? Da Shan lay down on the ground and bleated, telling his owner to quickly sit on him. He will domesticate him, despite the fact that he is an alpaca. Dai Zhang clarified, does he see? Da Shan invites him to sit down. Chen Fan said with a smile that he agreed to take it for himself, then he would bring Dai Zhang more wine. After some time, Da Shan stood up and proudly drove the gentleman along the city street. Chen Fan thought with satisfaction that the alpaca was clearly stronger than that dead horse. Fang Ling from the Black Cloud Clan said with delight, Wow, he has such a cute and strong alpaca. Then she asked if she could ride it. Da Shan proudly thought that only the owner could ride it. Chen Fan looked at her and commented on how cute the girl was. Seeing the smile on the owner's face, Da Shan asked anxiously, What? The gentleman is not going to allow her. Why did he think? Chen Fan happily replied, Yes. Fang Ling was jubilant. A red-haired girl approached them and irritably asked what was wrong with the mounts of mortal people. There are tens of thousands of different pets in the world, and she chose him. Fang Ling was already sitting astride the alpaca. Chen Fan angrily thought, how can they, cultivators, understand them, mere mortals? The red-haired girl, Liu Ziyuyin from the Black Cloud Clan, angrily folded her arms across her chest. Fang Ling, tightly hugging Da Shan's neck, answered her sister with a smile that their clan's mounts were also great, but this alpaca was very funny. Liu Xuan agreed that alpacas are very funny. She tossed Chen Fan a green coin and said that she was buying it. He examined it carefully and mentally asked with dissatisfaction, what kind of low-quality jade is this? Do they want to buy Da Shan for such an unnecessary thing? Liu Xuan sternly said that this was her alpaca and flashed her eyes angrily. Chen Fan laughed and said that he would not sell it for that price. An inner voice angrily demanded that he not give in to her, because this world is ruled by the strong. After a while, Liu Xuan and Fang Ling rose above the ground at speed, riding Da Shan. Chen Fan barely managed to dodge. He was indignant that he had just received it. Meanwhile, elsewhere, scarlet bright clumps rose upward from the crater of the volcano with all speed. The lava scattered in all directions and gradually solidified. The volcano was blazing with hellish flames on all sides. Yi Jing Hong looked at this dumbfounded and guessed that they had found Taoist Hoyan's treasure. Yi King Wu enthusiastically looked up, where huge clots of lava rose into the sky. Yi Jing Hong said with a confident expression that the warriors from their continent would most likely target him. He added that then there would be a bloody battle. Yi King Wu hoped that they would be able to complete the master's task. She clutched the handkerchief given by Chen Fan. Zhao Lingjai, placing her hands together in front, said, They will help, but only let them tell the master about it. Yin Ziu stood next to her without expressing any emotion. Yi Jing Hong looked at her with a frown and replied that there was no need for this because they could handle it themselves. Zhao Lingjai grinned and thought that he was being cautious after all. She mentally asked a question, if his master is so powerful, 
then isn't it a problem to get him the treasure? Suddenly, Zhao Lingzhai began to breathe heavily, clutching her chest with her hand, and cursed. A small drop of blood came from her mouth. There was a figure next to the volcano that had just attacked them. Zhao Lingzhai said dissatisfiedly they had not yet managed to move out, and they were already attacked. Yi Jinghong wiped the sweat dripping from his face and said, They cannot ask the master for help. He added that if he came, he would only laugh at the fact that they could not cope with some little thing. A gray-haired man appeared in front of them. Huang Xiao said that he was from the Black Cloud clan. He added, Hoyan stole the treasure from his clan. It was a cicada's wing, and he would take it back. Huang Xiao told them if they retreated, they would escape death. Yin Zhu said in shock that this was the leader of the Black Cloud clan. Xiao Lingzhai clenched her fists with confidence and said, this is one of the strongest people in the central zone of the Shenwu continent. Yi King Wu watched their dialogue with excitement. Yi Jing Hong, listening to the conversation between Zhao Lingzhai and Yin Ziyu, mentally asked, The strongest? He asked what's wrong with this. Huang Xiao continued to hover over the volcano. A dangerous glow emanated from it. Yi Jing Hong shouted, His order was for him to take the treasure from Taoist Huyan. He shouted that he would not retreat. Yi Jing Hong took the hoe tighter and replied, His master is strong and invincible. He was kind to him and helped him become stronger. He couldn't let him down, so death didn't scare him. Lin Tian put the kitchen knife forward. Huang Xiao asked, frowning, sir. He asked the question, where is he? He shouted to call him here. Yi Jing Hong asked threateningly, does he think such a small thing is worth his attention? He added to make sure Huang Xiao was sure, because he was probably watching over them. His hoe glowed with a blue aura. Huang Xiao opened his eyes in shock and felt the rays of the sun behind him. He looked back with alarm, noticing the bright sun illuminating the space. He immediately exclaimed that he fell for a trick that scares three-year-old children. Huang Xiao clenched his fists angrily and shouted for him to die. He attacked Yi Jing Hong with his fiery palm. The entire space around him was illuminated with scarlet light. A dazzling blue light emanated from the hoe. Yi Jing Hong shouted the command together. King Potion and Yi Jing Hong high in the sky tried their best to hold back the onslaught of a huge hand of spiritual power. For this, they used the weapons that the master gave them. Below, hovering above the ground, Zhao Lingzhai, Yin Ziyu, King Wu, and King Yin helped them with their spiritual power. They tried very hard, but they did not have enough skill to withstand Huang Xiao's enormous power. He suppressed their attacks with his spiritual power and then attacked himself. King Potion and Yu Jing Hong could not cope with this. Such a confrontation caused blood to come out of their mouths. At this time, Fang Ling and Liu Ziyuyin were passing by on an alpaca. They saw the flashes and glow of the confrontation between the auras of the two clans. Liu Ziyuyin said that this is the spiritual power of the master. The battle has already begun, they need to hurry. Fang Ling confirmed this in shock. Da Shan cried with resentment and lamented, How could the master leave him? Is he really not worthy? The exhausted King Tian also thought with concern, had the master really abandoned them? Yi Jing Hong bowed his head sadly, afraid that they would not be able to complete his task. Da Shan listened and wondered with surprise whether they were really talking about him. Stomping his hoof, he asked, The gentleman they are talking about, is this Master Chen? They looked at Da Shan in surprise. Fang Ling asked in amazement, can an alpaca speak? He stood silently with his head held high. Liu Ziyuyin stood nearby and watched menacingly. King Wu enthusiastically replied that yes about Mr. Chen. She then asked why he was asking. Huang Xiao's voice came from the sky, mockingly saying that he was a coward who was forcing him to fight for him. King Yin looked at him in surprise, her mouth open. Fang Ling, hearing the master's voice, happily waved her hand and shouted that she was here. Da Shan glanced at her with displeasure. He said with a smile that he understood everything and activated his spiritual power. Da Shan shouted angrily, soared above the ground and hit Fang Ling and Liu Ziyuyin with his energy. They flew away with a cry. Da Shan released his spiritual power, which rose high to the very heavens. He said eerily that everything was clear to him now. Everyone realized that this was the help that the master had sent them. King Wu asked hopefully, now they will win. Da Shan angrily rushed into the sky towards Huang Shao. The spirit of the great medicine emperor that was within him furiously asked how dare he insult his master. Huang Xiao asked cowardly, Emperor Wu. There was a powerful confrontation between two spiritual forces. Huang Xiao's yellow energy and Emperor Wu's blue energy collided. A strong explosion occurred, illuminating everything around with bright light. 
Everyone covered their eyes from this light. Zhao Lingjai and King Yin looked anxiously at the sky. From the blue glow, Da Shan appeared. The wounded Huang Xiao bitterly admitted that their master was indeed very strong. He looked at the enemy with one good eye and clenched his teeth furiously, where the hole was black from the missing tooth that he had lost in this battle. King Wu happily said that this was help. He didn't leave them. Zhao Lingjai and Yin Zhu watched in surprise. Yi Jing Hong looked into the sky through his tears and confirmed that, of course, the master would not leave them to die. Zhao Lingjai, looking at the defeated Huang Xiao, who was lying on the ground, crumpled in pain, decided that in future she needed to be more careful, otherwise she would die the same way as him. Liu Ziyuyin remembered Chen Fan, to whom she had thrown a jade coin, and realized in shock as she asked the question, Is their master an immortal hermit? Next to her, Fang Ling wept sadly, mourning her injured master. Then she rushed to him in tears. Liu Ziyuyin tried to stop her in fear, shouting, No! Fang Ling ran up to the crippled Huang Xiao, who was trying to get to his feet, and shielded him with her body from the oncoming energy wave of Da Shan. She begged in tears for the cute alpaca to spare the master. Da Shan exclaimed angrily, It's her. Just as he was about to stab her, Emperor Wu's voice inside him ordered him to stop. Emperor Wu wondered what if the master allowed her to ride him because he liked her. Or did he want him to save his servants but not harm the others? Huang Xiao and Fang Ling looked in amazement at the energy wave frozen in the air. The great emperor of medicine cursed anxiously and thought that this body could not withstand his strength. It's about to come out. Suddenly a whistle was heard and the alpaca's body fell noisily to the ground. Da Shan appeared from the cloud of dust. Emperor Wu's spirit flew out of his body and said excitedly that it was over, he couldn't fight anymore. Huang Xiao fell to his knees and forced Fang Ling to kneel next to him. They bowed respectfully before Da Shan. Huang Xiao said with excitement, thank him for saving his life. Da Shan widened his eyes in amazement, then spat in their direction and said that he didn't have time for them. The great emperor of medicine thought with relief, he was lucky that Huang Xiao didn't understand anything, otherwise he would already be dead. Yi Jing Hong bowed respectfully and said, thank him for his help. He asked the question, what should he call him? The alpaca replied that his name is Da Shan, he is the owner's sled pet. Then he asked what order did the master give him. Yi Jing Hong replied that the master was testing them to see if they could get the Hoyan treasure. Da Shan said decisively, then we must end this and return to the master. Mentally, he thought, before they understand anything, they need to get out of here quickly. After a while, Liu Ziyuyin asked worriedly, is the master okay? She and Fang Ling tried to help him get up. He replied that it could be said that way. He did not expect that he would see a pet equal in strength to Emperor Wu. He asked with interest, how strong is Chen Fan? He then asked the question, why was Fang Ling riding an alpaca? She began her story sadly. A few minutes later, everything was quiet and calm. Two hours later, an angry cry was heard. Huang Xiao shouted furiously, pointing his finger at Liu Ziyuyin that she was an idiot. He asked in bewilderment how she could allow such behavior with this man. He furiously announced that their entire ancient clan would now come to an end. He added, it's all because of her. He raised his hands and looked up in doom and shouted through his tears that this was the end. It's all over for them. Some time later, in the forest, Chen Fan sneezed, covering his mouth and nose with his palm. He leaned his hand wearily on the tree trunk and said that the continent was good, but being mortal was disgusting to him. He just received his vehicle, and it was immediately stolen. He sadly said that since he couldn't cultivate, he had to find another way to become stronger. Chen Fan heard a sound and looked forward. Da Shan ran towards him and bleated loudly. It was the spirit of the great emperor of medicine in this body who announced that he had completed his mission. Chen Fan asked in surprise, Da Shan. When the alpaca affectionately snuggled up to him, Chen Fan happily asked, was he able to find his way to him? What a smart alpaca he is. They heard a voice calling Mr. Chen and looked in that direction. Liu Ziyuyin, Huang Xiao, and Fang Ling were approaching them. Chen Fan thought fearfully, asking the question, how did she find him? Has she come back to take everything he has? He realized that he had lost that piece of jade. He's dead. He imagined Liu Zian cheerfully squeezing his neck with her hands. Chen Fan peacefully extended his hand and said with excitement that Da Shan himself had returned to him. He didn't steal it. Da Shan looked at them angrily. Huang Xiao, feeling guilty, said that he was the master of this stupid student. His name is Huang Xiao. He came to ask for forgiveness for her. Chen Fan looked at him in bewilderment, unable to find the right words. Liu Ziyuyin stood nearby in fear. 
Feng Ling clenched her fists in excitement and looked at Chen Fan with eyes full of anxiety. Huang Xiao thought with excitement that he used the word stole, which means he is still resentful of them. Chen Fan tried to understand in surprise, asking the question, what is he doing? Huang Xiao waited with excitement and fear to see what he would do. Chen Fan saw King Wu in the distance. She smiled joyfully at him. He realized with annoyance that it was she who brought them here so that they would apologize to him. At that moment, someone touched his hand. Fang Ling said with excitement that they understood their mistakes. She asked to spare her sister and the master. Huang Xiao and Liu Ziyuyin asked in horror, does she want them to die? Chen Fan said with a smile, now that Da Shan has returned, they can forget what happened in the past. He asked a question, right? He then sadly added that he had lost that piece of jade, Liu Ziyuyin and Huang Xiao. They happily reported that it was no big deal. They thanked him and bowed their heads in respect before him. Fang Ling could not hide her tears of joy. Chen Fan casually told them to leave. He turned in the other direction, where Zhao Lingzhai and Yan Ziyu and the joyful King Po Shen and King Wu stood in front of him. Chen Fan said importantly, Yi Jing Hong and the others. He asked the question, are these their friends? King Wu answered with a smile that everything was correct. She thought with alarm that they had led them to him. She asked whether Chen Fan would be offended. Zhao Lingzhai shyly introduced herself, saying her name. Yin Ziyu also nervously pressed her hand to her chest and said her name. Chen Fan noted that these girls are dressed like rich and respected people, and not like old man Yi, who is clearly collecting the last crumbs from the floor. Chen Fan said with a smile, since they all know each other, then Lady Zhao and Aunt Yin Ziyu should have dinner with them. Yin Ziyu blushed brightly and mentally asked, Aunt Ziyu, does she look that mature? Some time later, they approached the house where Chen Fan lived. Zhao Lingzhai realized with amazement that this was the palace of the immortal. Ji Jing Hong coughed. They were met by Zio Kai, who was happily swinging on a swing. She shouted joyfully that her brother had returned. King Wu understood in surprise and mentally asked the question, Is this the rabbit that she gave to the master? How did she take the form of a human? Chen Fan affectionately stroked Zio Kai's hair and asked if she behaved well while he was away. She happily hugged his neck and replied that of course. Yi King Wu didn't expect them to be like brother and sister to each other, she needs to treat her with respect too. Chen Fan hospitably invited everyone to sit down and said that he would now feed them all. Chen Fan looked at King Wu with embarrassment and thought that he would thank her. She thought with excitement, he knows that they completed his task and he recognized her. Yi King Wu called him and handed him the package. She thought with excitement that if she gave him the treasure in front of everyone, then his disguise as a mortal would be destroyed. Chen Fan, flattered, said with a smile, she is too kind because she brings him a gift every time. Yi King Wu repeated in confusion, a gift. Then, beaming happily, she said that it was in gratitude for the scarf. Chen Fan embarrassedly thought that he gave them both a scarf, but only she brought a gift in return. He excitedly suggested, asking the question, did she really like him? They stood under the legendary ancestor of all trees and looked tenderly into each other's eyes. Zio Kai watched them in surprise. She noticed that they were in love and clenched her hands into fists with excitement. Zio Kai could hardly contain her anger. She shouted out loud for her brother to open the gift quickly. From her cry, all the romance disappeared. Chen Fan came to his senses and said, sure. King Wu looked to the side in embarrassment. Zio Kai breathed a sigh of relief. Chen Fan opened the gift and saw the fabric bursting. He was moved and said, he couldn't think there was plastic here. Yi King Wu thought in surprise as she asked the question, plastic? Huang Xiao said that these are called cicada wings. He asked a question, maybe this is another name. Chen Fan asked with a smile, can she get more? He happily thought it would be perfect for greenhouses. Chen Fan decided that he would start building greenhouses and create his own agricultural empire. An idea struck him. He smiled happily and said that he had a request for Old Man Yi and Old Man King. He asked them if they would help. They were surprised and gladly said, of course. Yi Jing Hong thought blissfully that he was pleased with them and was ready to give a new task. While Chen Fan was thinking about his next course of action, King Tian happily thought that he would follow his every move. Chen Fan asked with interest, can they help him hire people? He will need 200 people in a month. Money is not a problem, but people must be reliable. Yi Jing Hong said with excitement that Chen Fan had finally begun his plan to cultivate the entire world. King Po Shen excitedly said that they needed to gather an army for him. They shouted out in one voice, no problem, he can rely on them. 
Chen Fan realized with satisfaction that the issue with the workers had been resolved. Looking back at Yi King Wu, he optimistically thought that since this was sorted out, he would have a chance to put things in order in his personal life. Chen Fan embarrassedly invited her to go for a walk. Yi King Wu's cheeks flushed bright red. When they went for a walk together, Zio Kai glared at them. Zhao Lingzhai and Yin Zhu were shocked. King Yin sadly lowered her eyes. After a while, Chen Fan held out the box on his palm and told her that it was for her. Yi King Wu looked at this in surprise and thought hopefully, will Chen Fan give her treasures? She opened the box and happily assumed that the master had finally given her a treasure. This contained a green round object. Yi King Wu saw that there was no aura emanating from him, and it seemed that it was not from their world. She picked it up to get a better look. There was a sword drawn on one side and a hieroglyph on the other. She hoped it would be something special, but why would he give her an ordinary amulet? Chen Fan asked with interest, does she like it? She pretended to be pleased and replied that she liked it. Then she thanked the gentleman. Yi King Wu asked with interest, what does this amulet mean? She thought with alarm, was he hinting to her that there was no need to rush? Chen Fan replied that it was a jade amulet that he made with his own hands to represent his desire to cultivate. He admitted that this is the most valuable thing he has. Yi King Wu mentally asked in bewilderment, the desire to cultivate. She didn't understand, his master giving this to her to tell her that she should cultivate diligently. She sadly realized that even though she had become his pawn, she was still not worthy to receive the weapon. Chen Fan saw that she was sad. Yi King Wu sadly thought that she was sorry. Apparently she's in too much of a hurry, but he probably wants the best for her. Chen Fan patted her on the head. She understood what he wanted to say. She will wear this. Chen Fan embarrassedly admired her beauty. Then he turned away and gave a thumbs up, thinking that was great. After a while, in the courtyard, Da Shan was eating grass and proudly said that he was the master's sled pet. The horse angrily declared that this was his land and greedily covered the grass with his paws. Da Shan retorted that he didn't care that he came here earlier, let him look at him. Da Shan proudly, towering over the horse, declared that he had become the master's riding pet, but the horse had not. He arrogantly asked, should he continue, or will he himself recognize his superiority? The horse looked at him sadly and said that he was asking for forgiveness. He didn't understand it right away, let Da Shan accept this grass as an apology. He replied arrogantly, so be it. The horse desperately thought that it was created to be the master's faithful horse. He should eat more and gain weight. Da Shan tasted the grass and asked in disappointment, why does it taste so rotten? The horse asked with interest the question, how is it? He joyfully reported that this grass was plucked by Brother Dog and Brother Raven. Da Shan spat out the grass with disgust, imagining how a raven and a dog tore it. He asked irritably, so it was in others' mouths. Da Shan said it was disgusting. Sometime later, late at night, when they were returning home, Yi Jing Hong resolutely said that since they would gather an army for the master, he would take over the kingdom of Chilin, and King would take over the kingdom of Zhuao. He remembered how the day before, Yin Ziyu had nervously asked Chen Fan if he would mind if she stayed here to mow the grass and take care of the cattle. Chen Fan said with alarm that he only had food and shelter, he could not pay his salary. She sheepishly said that if she didn't disturb him, then she agreed. Chao Lingzhai excitedly announced that she could water the plants. She asked hopefully, will he take her to him? Chen Fan replied with a smile that it was good, they could work together. Let them pack their things at home and move in with him. Remembering this, Yi Jing Hong ordered Zhao Lingzhai and Yin Ziu to follow his orders and live with him. They bowed respectfully and said goodbye to him. After everyone had disappeared, Yi Jing Hong said displeasedly that Yi King Wu had made a mistake today. He asked a question sternly. She thought that since she had completed the master's task, she now deserves more, is he right? She listened to his words with concern. Yi Jing Hong continued, she is the master's pawn, and wanting more is a big mistake. She understands perfectly well that she is unworthy of him. King Wu sadly lowered her eyes and thought that her father understood this. The master was definitely right. That's why he gave her this amulet and not the treasure. She cried sadly, deciding that Chen Fan just wanted to tell her that she should know her place. Yi Jing Hong looked to the side and was startled to see Huang Xiao falling to his knees. Yi Jing Hong dissatisfiedly asked the question, why hasn't he left yet? Huang Xiao replied sadly, Chen Fan told him to leave, so he fell to his knees here and thought about what he had done wrong. Yu Jing Hong condescendingly replied that it was not bad, he was definitely on the right path. Chen Fan didn't kill him just because he thought he was useful. 
Huang Xiao beamed with delight and said that he knew it. It will definitely be useful. The gentleman can rely on him at any time. He Jing Hong said that this was his daughter, Yi King Wu. The master asked her to find more cicada wings. This is the treasure of their clan. Let him help her. Huang Xiao bowed respectfully and assured that he would do his best. Yi Jing Hong said with satisfaction, excellent. Yi King Wu, wiping her tears, decided that she needed to forget. It's better to discard unnecessary thoughts for now and concentrate on the new task. Over time. Chen Fan said that they would need a lot of money to hire so many people. His calligraphy can be sold for a high price. Zio Kai noticed that as soon as he picked up the brush, a new star appeared in the night sky. In surprise, she mentally asked the question, has the owner really come down from heaven? Chen Fan set to work thinking that calligraphy could be divided into three stages. The first is the basics. Correct position, brush holding technique, writing. With practice, anyone can master it. Zio Kai admired how Chen Fan worked. He skillfully applied hieroglyphs onto a canvas of paper with a brush. She thought blissfully that her master's spirit was making her blood boil. She already feels like she can tear down mountains. The second stage is understanding. Only by understanding the true meaning of calligraphy can you create your own unique style. Zio Kai came to the realization that she should not be happy about everything. Don't be sad about the mistakes you've made. Peace will come, and freedom will follow. The third stage was the unity of man and heaven. Not everyone can achieve union with heaven. Not everyone can achieve divinity. Only one person in 200 years can achieve this. Zio Kai thought in surprise as she asked, Don't these words speak about the master? He is the strongest immortal, but has now descended to the mortal level to live like an ordinary person. Chen Fan finished his work and put down his brush with a thud. He said that everything was ready, but it wasn't good enough. He sighed sadly and said that this was not enough, but he tried so hard. Zio Kai looked at him in confusion. Chen Fan went to the window and sadly thought that without money, he would not be able to build greenhouses, which means he would not be able to go on a date with Yi King Wu and have fun with her. He remembered her beautiful face. I dreamily imagined how they would have fun catching up with each other. He will roll her on his back and hug her tenderly. Looking through his tears at the moon in the sky, he sadly thought that three days had already passed, and she still had not given anything in return. He wondered if he had made a mistake. When his gaze fell on the backyard, he was dumbfounded and shouted out the question, Where did so much manure come from on this horse? There was a huge mountain of it. A little while later, the horse's legs gave way. He said not confidently that he could eat more. Ziobai looked at him with concern. The horse lay exhausted on the ground and struggled to eat. Chen Fan, confused, said that he sprayed all the grass with a laxative so that the horse would stop eating. Stunned, he asked the question, didn't that stop him? Sitting in front of the huge, smelly pile, Chen Fan looked at the horse with alarm and asked why he was behaving like this. Ziobai, Da Shan, and Zianiao sat next to the exhausted horse. Chen Fan sadly said that he would have to kill him before it was too late, otherwise the meat might spoil. All the animals were horrified by his decision. Zio Kai thought in fear she was sorry that he would die, but nothing could be done about it. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan Prince thought, how sad. He opened his eyes wide and imagined Chen Fan in front of him. The horse mentally thought that he was the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan. He is an azure dragon. He mentally asked the question, will he end his life like this? The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan Prince rolled his eyes, beads of sweat running down his muzzle. Zio Kai leaned over him and said, they saw him working hard to serve his master. She stroked his face and added that if he wanted to continue living, then she had a plan. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan stood up on his bent legs and asked her to say this to him. Zio Kai said, he has plowed almost all the land, created a lot of fertilizer, but still hasn't realized something. She pointed her hand at a pile of manure that had a bad smell and said that the fertilizer needed to be mixed with the soil. Zio Kai added as she began to explain how when fertilizer is absorbed into the soil, it unlocks the full potential of the earth. The plow dug its teeth into the ground, tearing it apart. The prince of the eastern sea dragon clan, with a weakened body and red eyes from fatigue, was pulling a plow behind him. Chen Fan asked Zio Kai in surprise, what is she doing here? Zio Bai sat and looked at Chen Fan nervously. Zio Kai exclaimed joyfully, brother. She added that the skinny horse was working again. Let him see how well done the horse is. Chen Fan was holding a huge cleaver in his hands. Sometime later, Chen Fan plucked leaves of grass and thoughtfully said, Okay, 
he is not going to kill the horse so easily. He thought that if he killed him, Zio Kai would definitely be upset. He placed herb petals in a clay vase. Dashan, Ziobai, and Zioniao, together with the ant, looked in surprise at the vase from which multicolored smoke was coming out. Zio Kai asked Chen Fan, What is this? Chen Fan replied that it was herbal medicine. They will see if it helps the horse. Chen Fan opened the horse's mouth and began to pour this liquid into it. After some time, the sweat on the horse's body disappeared. Veins began to appear heavily on the legs and torso. Suddenly, the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan stood up energetically and shouted as his chest rushed forward. He felt strength in his legs. He was ready to plow another thousand hectares. The horse rushed across the field at high speed, continuing to plow the ground. Chen Fan, stunned, rubbed the back of his head with his hand and said, This horse, but he decided to forget this moment and did not finish his thought. He turned to Zio Kai and told her that she was going to the city with him tomorrow. Zio Kai asked him in surprise why. Chen Fan put his finger forward and explained, they will sell his calligraphy and paintings. Meanwhile in Kingsi City, the guy yawned sleepily and covered his mouth with his hand. He was the strongest genius from the saint's palace. He had to hide his power and travel the world to make a breakthrough. He sadly rubbed his head with his hand and thought that a year had already passed. It was Yan Zio Feng. He asked the question, when will he be able to understand the true meaning of the ball's path? He suddenly stopped when he noticed a strange spiritual energy. With confusion in his thoughts, he asked the question, what kind of aura is this? The people standing next to the painting exclaimed enthusiastically that Chen Fan's paintings were real works of art. A man from the crowd said that it was very beautiful. He asked the question, can he buy it? The painting showed a man standing on a mountain watching the sun rise. Near the mountain, the waves of the sea raged violently. Yan Xiaofeng looked at the painting and thought displeasedly that mortals were desecrating this treasure. He pushed aside the crowd of people and tried to get close to the painting. He suddenly opened his eyes in a daze, still feeling a strong aura. Yan Xiaofeng found himself inside the painting. He saw the waves crashing against the rocks with all their might. He shielded himself with his arms to avoid being hurt by the strong splashes of water. Through his fingers, he saw a guy with long blonde hair standing on the mountainside, who looked at him with a tenacious gaze. Yan Zio Feng mentally exclaimed, The will of the sword. He made his way further through the water. He extended his hand forward and mentally exclaimed, The highest level of the ball's path. Yan Zio Feng grabbed the tavern manager by the shoulders and shouted the question, How much will he sell him this painting for? The tavern leader asked him a question, clutching the scroll of the painting in his hands, Who is he? He exclaimed that it was not his turn yet. The man standing next to them confirmed this and shouted, Let him participate in the auction like everyone else. Yan Zio Feng awkwardly rubbed the back of his head and asked them a question. Did they say that this picture was painted by a certain Chen fan? He asked them where he was. The tavern owner stuck out his finger and explained that he had just left. Yan Zio Feng walked out of the building and thought in his mind, the one who drew knew the essence of all existence. He's definitely the emperor of drawing. Yan Zio Feng jumped down the steps and ran while still thinking. He mentally asked the question, why did he sell the treasure to mere mortals? Chen Fan was greeted by the man. He greeted him back with a cheerful smile. Da Shan stood next to them with a dissatisfied expression on his face. He was tied with a rope to Chen Fan's backpack. Zio Kai looked forward enthusiastically and, pointing her finger at one of the merchant's counters, told him that she wanted to try that thing over there. Yan Zio Feng thought with undisguised happiness, here he is. Chen Fan, like him, disguised himself as an ordinary mortal. Yan Zio Feng called out to him and told him to stop. Zio Kai and Chen Fan stopped in surprise, looking at him. Chen Fan asked him a question, is he him? Yan Zio Feng introduced himself by name and said that he had seen his painting. He explained that it shocked him to the core. Yan Zio Feng respectfully clasped his hands together as a sign of respect. He said that he ran after him to buy this painting. He asked his forgiveness if he scared him. Chen Fan mentally asked a question, is he not only a swordsman, but also a connoisseur of art? Yan Zio Feng clenched his toes, which were visible because of his holy shoe, because of his strong anxiety. Chen Fan mentally decided that he would sell it to him. He handed over the picture, folded into a scroll, and said that he would take ten gold pieces from it. He sells paintings and calligraphy only in this city. He added that it was fate that they met him. Chen Fan said he was very lucky. Yan Zio Feng stood up to put his hands into his wallet for more coins. After some time, he handed it over, giving it to the owner of the painting. 
Chen Fan handed him the painting. Gyan Zio Fang thanked him. Zio Kai mentally asked him a question. Did he even understand how great her master is? Chen Fan carefully counted the money in his hands. Yan Zio Fong looked warily at Zio Kai and again began to look at the painting in his hands in love. He opened a scroll, on which was drawn a small chick looking for worms in the ground. He thoughtfully put his hand to his chin and mentally asked the question, Is this the rebirth of a phoenix? He imagined a huge fiery bird flying out of the picture, flapping its wings majestically. He mentally exclaimed, This picture symbolizes the rebirth of the phoenix, which is why he is depicted as a little chicken. Yan Zio Feng folded the scroll, from which a fiery aura continued to emanate. He thought, Phoenixes are often found in the kingdom of Feng Wu. Feng Wu wanted this country to be reborn and renounce its sins. He decided that he was going there, sometime later in the kingdom of Chilin. In the palace room, there was a dark aura everywhere. There was a man sitting in the room who, tiredly, continued to meditate and soar in the air. Zhao Lingzhai asked her mother what happened to her father. Her mother, desperately wiping her tears with a handkerchief, replied that this was the work of people from Feng Wu. Zhao Lingzhai asked again, the kingdom of Feng Wu. She worriedly thought that Yi Jing Hong had gone there. Zhao Lingzhui turned to her mother and told her not to worry. She exclaimed that the days of Feng Wu's kingdom were already numbered. The father, exhausted, asked the question, what is she talking about? Zhao Lingzhai explained to her father that the gentleman she met sent the servant Yi Jing Hong to the Feng Wu kingdom. Her father stopped her with a wave of his hand and said that he didn't care. He, taking his wife by the hand, who approached him, said that he had decided to transfer the throne to her fifth brother. He lowered his gaze with regret and said, from now on she must help him and does not even think about competing with him for the throne. Her mother advised her to listen to her father's words. Zhao Lingzhai replied that Yi Jing Hong had already been able to make a breakthrough thanks to the master. She added that he gave him a spiritual weapon so that he could take over the kingdom of Feng Wu. She also became his servant and will now serve him faithfully. She will water his flowers. Her mother and father looked at her dumbfounded, not understanding what she was talking about. Suddenly my father felt sick and blood started coming out of his mouth. The queen squeezed his hand harder and exclaimed in fear, His Majesty. After some time, the king, clearing his throat, asked the question, What other gentleman? He asked how a proud princess could become a servant. Zhao Lingzhai summoned her magical power and replied that she did not want to argue with them. A blue glow came from her hand. She added that they should just take a look at it. A powerful aura appeared next to her. Her parents asked her in disbelief, Has she already climbed three steps? Zhao Lingzhai replied that she was not the only one, because Yin Zhu also made a breakthrough. Everyone said that the master came from the forbidden lands called Earth. The king asked, dumbfounded, Earth, where does such a master come from in their lands? The queen, stunned, asked her husband, does he see this too? The king said tiredly, this master is definitely very strong, otherwise she would not have been able to become his servant. He asked his wife if they could meet him and ask him to protect their state. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Dai Zhang exclaimed joyfully, Chen Fan has already returned. He added that he caught the traffickers he was looking for. Zio Kai asked again, is this true? She asked the question, how did he catch them? Dai Zhang replied with a smile as he went on his quest. Two people approached him and told him that they could make him an aristocrat if he came with them. He exclaimed that you couldn't fool him like that. He immediately realized that they were exactly what they were talking about. The two men bowed in regretful bows before Chen Fan. Zio Bai approached his owner, happily wagging his tail. The men, bowing, shouted at him to understand them because they were not human traffickers. They added that he simply misunderstood them. Chen Fan turned to Zio Kai and asked her if these were the people who kidnapped her. Zio Kai looked out from his shoulder and said, Okay. Chen Fan looked at the two men and asked the question, Who beat them up like that? Zio Kai walked up to them and looked at the men carefully. Dai Zhang awkwardly rubbed the back of his head and, pointing his finger at Zio Bai, replied that it was him. Chen Fan leaned towards Zio Bai and asked a question, did he understand that they were bad people? He praised him and patted him on the head, calling him well done. Zio Bai exclaimed joyfully that his master was praising him. Zio Kai looked at the men and thought, she wants to be like a master, treating people modestly and with respect. The man looked at her in surprise and mentally guessed that it was a spiritual rabbit. Zio Kai turned to Chen Fan and said that they were not the ones who kidnapped her. She didn't know who it was. Chen Fan was dumbfounded and mentally asked the question, did they make a mistake? Did they catch the wrong people? Zio Bai asked a question in fear, did he bite the wrong people? 
The man suddenly looked at him shrewdly and exclaimed the question, Are the traffickers he is looking for somehow connected with his sister? Chen Fan continued to look at the men in shock. He confirmed this and explained that she was kidnapped and wanted to be sold in Kingsi City. The man exclaimed shrewdly, he knows who he is talking about. He can lead them straight to him. Chen Fan extended his hand to him in a friendly manner and said, he made a mistake, which is why they suffered. He asked them a question, are they still ready to help him? Chen Fan told them to follow him. He will heal their wounds. Sometime later. The men clasped their hands together in a sign of respect and told Chen Fan to trust them as they would lead the slave traders straight to him. Chen Fan waved goodbye to them and thanked them for their help. The man asked Kai Shu, who was moved and wiped tears from his eyes, does he really know human slave traders? Kai Shu replied, this is a little girl from the Jade Rabbit Clan. He assumed that they must have stolen it from there. He finds out who these people are from the head of the clan. A man with short hair and a green outfit said insistently, their mission was to bring Dai Zhui back. He asked him a question, did he forget? Kai Shu made a displeased grimace and shouted the question, is he blind? He exclaimed, Dai Zhui was the weakest of them, now let them look at him. He put his finger forward and shouted that the pure blood of the sage of the monkey people had awakened in him. He investigated and realized that Chen Fan had been helping him all along. Dai Zhui's power awakened because of him. He was sure of it. If they help Chen Fan, then they too can become stronger. A man with a short haircut excitedly clenched his fists and exclaimed, Exactly! Meanwhile, elsewhere. Chen Fan turned to Zio Kai, who was washing things in a basin, and said that he would wash it himself. Zio Kai replied, She is old enough to help him with his laundry. Chen Fan carefully stroked her head and said that he was lucky to have her. He said dreamily, If only they had a washing machine. Zio Kai mentally asked, Washing machine. Chen Fan at the same moment turned to Zio Bai and asked him a question, How does he like the booth? Zio Kai mentally asked the question, is this really how the owner gave her the task of finding an artifact called a washing machine? Chen Fan was hammering nails into boards. Blue sparks came from it. Chen Fan used the carpenter god skill. Xiaobai, Dashan, and the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan watched him in surprise. Xiaoyao sat next to the ant and asked the question why the owner gave the house only to him. The ant asked with dissatisfaction and contempt whether he was really his favorite. Xiaobai grinned maliciously and confirmed this. He added that this is because he is the smartest of them all. In the past, it was enough for him to pretend to be a cute dog, but now Zio Kai has appeared. He needed another way. He added that that's why he bit the text of two people and got the job as a watchdog. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan frowned and said that the owner was hard to understand, but he also had to find another way to stand out and not just plow the land. Dashan frowned and said that the dragon was right because he also needed to find this way. Ant and Zionial added that they did too. Ziobai exclaimed enthusiastically that this booth was simply perfect. This helps him cultivate because of the flows within. Chen Fan noticed Ziobai rolling from side to side in the booth and said that he seemed to like this booth. He was glad. Ziobai suddenly became alert when he heard strange sounds. Zhao Lingjai exclaimed that they were back. Behind her stood her parents and Yin Zhu. Ziobai suddenly ran out quickly after noticing strangers in his territory. Quickly moving his paws, he ran across a huge space and began barking angrily. He showed with all his appearance that he was not an ordinary watchdog, but a heavenly wolf. Zhao Lingjai's mother and father cowered in fear and shouted a question, sacred wolf. Xiaobai grabbed the shoulder of Zhao Lingjai's father, who desperately began to scream in pain. Chen Fan desperately shouted at him, asking why he bit their guests. After a couple of moments, he confusedly asked them a question, are they safe? Zhao Lingjai answered with a smile that he should not worry because her father was in very good health. Her mother looked at her husband with fear and worry, who began to cry in pain. Chen Fan awkwardly ran his hand through his hair and invited them to talk inside. Xiaobai thought contentedly that the owner was not scolding him. He decided that he had definitely behaved correctly and would not hold back any longer. Zhao Lingjai's father glanced at the small house and asked a question, Is this a booth? He looked at it and exclaimed that he wanted to sleep in it. The queen opened her mouth in shock and asked him to calm down. Chen Fan lay the cup in his hands and said that let them get straight to the point. He told them it was their job to take care of the animals. He will pay three and a half thousand copper coins. He will feed them and provide housing. Chen Fan asked them a question, are they satisfied with everything? 
Zhao Lingzhai and her mother sheepishly agreed with this, answering of course. Zhao Lingzhai's father opened his eyes in shock and mentally asked the question, What kind of tea is this? He joyfully thought that all his wounds were healed. A bright yellow glow emanated from his mug of tea, and he mentally assumed that he had made a breakthrough. Chen Fan smiled sweetly at this time and said that these are tools for them. He held out two things that looked like a scythe for cutting crops in the fields. Zhao Lingjai and her mother looked at it with delight. Zhao Lingjai turned to him and said that she would see off her parents and return to him at night. Chen Fan smiled friendly and replied, Okay. Over time. Zhao Lingjai walked forward quickly. Her parents asked her a question, where was she in such a hurry? The father exclaimed, puzzled, that they should have stayed for dinner. Zhao Lingjai angrily asked them a question, how dare they open their mouths? She shouted that because of them, Chen Fan was now angry with her. Her mother asked her a question, he gave her a treasure, how could he be angry with her? Zhao Lingjai explained with tears in her eyes, until this moment the gentleman had told her that she would water the flowers. Now he gave her the task of taking care of the animals. Moreover, he gave them this spiritual weapon. She admitted that she wanted to be more than ordinary. Zhao Lingzhai desperately wiped the tears on her cheeks and exclaimed that he was definitely angry with her now. Her father clenched his fist angrily and shouted a question, even if he was angry, what did they have to do with it? He told her to show their respect for him. Zhao Lingzhai shouted furiously, they showed respect with their minds, not their hearts. Her mother pressed her hands to her chest and asked the question, how did he know this? Zhao Lingzhai answered with tears in her eyes, every word of the master carries great meaning, but they disappointed her. Her mother touched her shoulder and told her not to be sad. If he didn't kick her out, but still left her nearby, then he's definitely not angry. She guessed he was probably just up to something. Zhao Lingzhai asked her a question, does she understand Chen Fan? The mother answered her that he had many animals in his yard, and they did not need care. She assumed that meant he wanted him and his father to bring him more animals. She exclaimed that they would atone for their sins. Zhao Lingjai's father replied that it was time for them to go to the endless sea. He imagined how huge waves crashed against the rocks and sandy shores. Meanwhile, elsewhere. Xiao Kai rode on a tree and said contentedly that the vine was blooming and covering their garden with greenery. The vine was tightly grasped by Xiao Kai's hand. She mentally asked the question, does that mean she needs to become a vine? Chen Fan exhaled sadly and mentally began to reason that 21 days had already passed, and Yi King Wu had not given him a return gift. He mentally asked the question, was he rejected? Suddenly he saw dust rising in the distance. He was dumbfounded and asked the question, seeing a huge number of people, what is this? King Potion shouted that he had found a hundred people for him. He explained everything to everyone and everyone was ready to get down to business. Chen Fan admitted that he did not expect this. He asked him how he even managed to hire so many people. He immediately turned to the people and told them to follow him because he would assign work to everyone. People obediently raised their hands up and shouted, Okay, some time later. Zhao Lingjai desperately wiped away the tears flowing from her eyes. Chen Fan asked her and Yin Ziu to come to him for a second. He held a bucket in his hands and said that now others will look after the animals. He added that behind them there was a yard and cleaning of floors, as well as watering of flowers and plants. Yin Ziu and Zhao Lingjai accepted the mop bucket. Taoist symbols and a strong aura emanated from them. Chen Fan thought with a smile that it would be better to give the girls simple jobs. Yin Ziu and Zhao Lingjai looked at each other and did not understand anything. Yin Ziu threw the broom up and exclaimed, The Lord wants her to cleanse these lands of dirt. Zhao Lingjai clutched the watering can tighter and exclaimed contentedly, The owner wants it to create rivers and lakes. Yin Ziu looked at her warily and repeated the words after her, Create rivers and lakes. She explained with a smile that this was a task worthy of a queen. She suggested that maybe the owner was confessing his love to her in this way. Zhao Lingjai said in embarrassment that she should not say such nonsense. Suddenly, an ant and Zionyao flew up to her and bowed down on the ground. The Eastern Sea Dragon Clan Prince bent his front legs and bowed to her. Ziobai stood on his hind legs and folded his front paws together. All the animals bowed before the master's future wife. Zhao Lingjai turned to the animals and said, Even if they understand all this, they shouldn't talk about it. She asked them a question, Is it clear to them all? She imagined Chen Fan and her standing on the roof of one of the houses. Chen Fan turned to her and said that she deserves to be only with him. Zhao Lingjai confirmed this and admitted that she did not come here to be his maid. She must help him rule the world. 
She thought purposefully, imagining the world lying in the palm of her hand, and exclaimed, Only power will make them happy. Suddenly, her thoughts were interrupted by Chen Fan. He asked her a question, could she come to him? He shouted that he needed her help. Zhao Lingjai straightened her hair and shouted back that she was coming. She mentally asked the question, does he want privacy? Zhao Lingjai embarrassedly imagined kissing him on the lips. Suddenly she exclaimed awkwardly that it was too early for that. She glanced at Chen Fan and thought that he was very powerful and would definitely take over the world. She must be by his side and do her duty, even if she has to do it today. Zhao Lingjai closed the door and asked Chen Fan, what did he want to ask? Chen Fan ran his hands through his hair in embarrassment. He thought that they were left alone, and it embarrassed him very much. Suddenly, he asked her a question. How would she react if she was given a gift? Zhao Lingjai mentally asked a question. Is he speaking so directly? She decided that he definitely liked this. Chen Fan thought awkwardly. She is a girl, and maybe she will help him understand Yi King Wu better. Zhao Lingjai gathered her strength, and after a while, she confidently shouted that she agreed. Chen Fan was stunned and asked her a question, what? Zhao Lingjai awkwardly placed her index fingers together and replied, she wanted to say that she would accept the gift. She added that if she liked this man, she would give a return gift. Chen Fan thought it was good that he asked her. He realized that she was well versed in a girl's feelings. Zhao Lingjai looked at him embarrassedly and thought that he had not yet spoken directly about his feelings. She must be patient. Chen Fan asked her a question, what does it mean if a man does not receive a gift in return? Zhao Lingjai asked a question, maybe it was because she had some urgent matters. Did she ask him, or did she want to give something special? Chen Fan thought for a moment, placing his finger on his chin and admitting that he was wondering. He asked the question, is this so? Zhao Lingjai covered her mouth with her hand and mentally asked a question, did Chen Fan give her a watering can to express his love for her? She exclaimed that now he wants to remind her that if she likes him, then she should give something in return. Three days later, a small river ran next to the multi-story buildings. The man standing on the mountainside shouted enthusiastically that this was a collection of the five elemental spirits from legends. King Chen said exactly. He asked Yi Jinghong a question, is he at home? That Chen Fan will choose the building site by chance. He added that he would soon realize how great his plans were. Chen Fan turned to King Potion and shouted, the people he brought were beautiful and builders. He explained that they built the dormitory cafeteria in just three days. King Chen replied with a smile, each of them is ready to do anything for their master. Chen Fan smiled kindly and said, come on. Chen Fan looked at the completed buildings and said thoughtfully, the ideal plan would be if they also built a basketball court. He added that when everyone rests, they will be able to play basketball. He suggested that maybe they would even hold small competitions. King Potion was dumbfounded and asked him a question, what is a basketball court? Chen Fan rolled his eyes and explained, this is where they play basketball, but without a basketball, you can't play basketball. Zhao Lingjai was surprised, but asked him a question, what is a basketball sick ball? Chen Fan answered her, this is a leather ball, there is air inside it, because of this it bounces very well. He patted the presented ball and added that it also makes a cool sound when you hit it. Zhao Lingjai thought in surprise, realizing that she had seen this somewhere. Zhao Lingjai turned to him and said she could ask for a couple of days off. She explained that she would be returning home for a while. Chen Fan agreed with this and replied of course. He added that it would be difficult to return alone, so let her take Da Shan. Chen Fan turned to King Potion and said that he had work to do for him and the others. Zhao Lingjai decided that she should find the basketball. She mentally thought that this would be her return gift. Sometime later in the barnyard, someone's voice was heard addressing the great lady that she should teach them. The azure dragon joined its hooves in prayer and exclaimed with tears that they too wanted to receive the love and care of their master. Zhao Lingjai smiled sweetly and asked them to stand up. She said that she had been taking care of them for a while now, so she became attached to them. She wouldn't want Chen Fan to give them up. Zhao Lingjai turned to Da Shan and said that the gentleman had talked about his trip with her. She asked Da Shan if he understood what this meant. Da Shan obediently confirmed this and said, he will do whatever the master orders. Zhao Lingjai explained, the master told her that she must find the treasure. She concluded that it was a brilliant pearl. The azure dragon looked at her in shock and repeated, brilliant pearl. Zhao Lingjai asked him a question, maybe he knows where it can be found, because he is an ancient creature. The shiny pearl was the treasure of the Black Turtle Clan. Their clan had been searching for this for millennia. 
The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan exclaimed that they were still able to find out that it was in the Chillin realm. He put his hooves forward and exclaimed, when he met Chen Fan, he was just going after this pearl. Zhao Lingzhai stroked the horse's muzzle and asked if he could tell her anything else. The prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan replied that the entire Dragon Clan knew what she looked like. He can show. The horse inflated a ball of saliva, and in the reflection of this a brilliant and precious diamond appeared. Zhao Lingzhai exclaimed enthusiastically, so this is what it is. She shouted to Da Shan that they were leaving. After some time, she raced from Chen Fan's house riding Da Shan. Zhao Lingzhai waved her hand at Zio Long and said that he had helped her a lot. She thanked him again. Meanwhile, in the Fengaming Kingdom, in the Imperial City, Yu Jinghong flew over the city with a hoe in his hands and exclaimed that soon the whole world would be conquered by his master. He advised all people to obey immediately. Yu Jinghong pointed his finger forward threateningly and shouted at them to answer. A voice from a house saturated with black and scarlet energy asked the question, What other gentleman? The same voice asked what kind of nonsense this is. Yi Jing Hong shouted that his master had come from a distant place called Earth. It was no surprise to him that he knew nothing about him. Yi Jing Hong mentally asked the question, What is this black fog? He noticed that it was a very strong demonic aura. The voice sent out a huge wave of black energy and answered, If this is all he has, this is a weak weapon, then his master is dead. Yi Jing Hong angrily swung his hoe and shouted that he should not dare to offend his master. He ordered the owner of the voice to die. Yi Jing Hong dealt a strong blow to the black energy. Instead of his blow, at that same second it began to turn into a dark whirlpool, sucking everything into itself. Yi Jing Hong's mouth began to bleed from the black whirlpool of strong aura. He clutched the hoe even tighter in his hands. After a moment, he landed on the asphalt with all his speed and strength, breaking it into small pieces. The soil lying under the asphalt also scattered throughout the area. A terrifying expression appeared from the Black Aura, advising him to turn back to Zhuxian Palace while he was still alive. Yi Jing Hong lay on the asphalt and did not understand what palace he was talking about, because everything was under the control of his master. If he cannot defeat him, then someone has already come to his aid. A face made of Black Aura angrily exclaimed that this was nonsense. A black hand appeared from the same aura and reached towards Yi Jing Hong. A terrifying voice shouted for him to die. Yan Zio Feng, wearing a hat and without any emotion, said, A lonely shadow of a cold river. Suddenly a wanderer. They will introduce themselves to each other when he finishes. Suddenly he pulled the sword from the sheath on his back. The face, consisting of a black aura, puzzledly asked the question, Who? The sword loomed over Yan Zio Feng. Suddenly he stood up and flew, beginning to look around the entire territory with a wary gaze. Yi Jing Hong thought in surprise, What a style! He immediately rolled his eyes and told him to stop showing off. He ordered him to deal with him already. Yan Zio Feng asked a question. He saved him, and he talks to him like that. Yi Jing Hong replied, he was the master's loyal pawn. The master ordered him to conquer the kingdom of Fengaming. He asked him a question. Did he come here on the orders of Mr. Chen? Yan Zio Feng opened his eyes in shock and repeated, Mr. Chen. Suddenly, the black aura dissipated and a man in a cloak appeared from it. He put his arms out to the sides and laughed freely. He asked the question, What kind of mediocre master is this? He exclaimed that they didn't even know each other. The man was clutching his stomach with laughter. Suddenly a sword blade was pointed at his face. Yan Zio Feng asked a question, Is he talking about Mr. Chen from Kingxi City? Yi Jing Hong confirmed this and said, It means he understood the master's plans correctly. He rubbed his mustache thoughtfully. Yan Zio Feng put two fingers forward and replied that he understood. He explained, his painting told him that the Fengaming kingdom was in danger and he must free its inhabitants from more suffering. The man in the cloak, stunned and frightened, asked the question, does he want to try to kill him? The man shouted that their Zhuxian palace would soon take revenge on them. Many bright and sparkling swords pierced his body. Yan Zio Feng continued to control it and a golden glow emanated from his body. After some time, the doors opened. Many people came into this and exclaimed that they were ready to serve the master. Yi Jing Hong replied that it was natural. He introduced himself by name and said that he was in the respect of the master. Yan Zio Feng introduced himself in response and rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment, saying that the master had sent him to help him. He added, This man said that he was from Zhuxian Palace, but his techniques reminded him of the demon clan from the legends. He feared that the world would soon descend into chaos. Yi Jing Hong told him not to worry, because if the master rules the world, 
there will be no chaos. He added that peace would reign everywhere. Some time later, a man was forging iron in a forge. Someone said happily that Yu Jing Hong had finally returned. King Tian asked with interest, did he hire that guy? Yu Jing Hong hesitantly answered yes. He then looked at him carefully and asked a question, is he already at the dragon stage? King Potion whispered in his ear that the master was very unhappy with him, and Yi King Wu. Yi Jing Hong asked excitedly, really? King Potion said that over these few days, he constantly asked him when King Wu would return. Behind them, a builder was painting the wall on scaffolding. Xi Jing Hong realized with alarm that the master was unhappy that she had not yet completed the mission. Mentally, he thought, oh, where is she? A little more, and he will no longer be able to protect her. A little while later. A forest of disappointments. Yellow liquid flowed from the tree trunk in large drops. Birds of prey were flying in the sky. There were beehives hanging on the trees. Lin Xiaoyan wondered in despair whether he would die here. A sword glowed in his belt. Seeing this, he realized that the sword had spiritual power. He remembered that this sword was given to him by some child who traded it for candy. Lin Xiaoyan realized that he received this sword thanks to the master. With these thoughts, he decisively moved towards the exit. Some time later, King Wu and Huang Xiao stood in front of a huge tree in the forest. She said that if she brought cicada wings, she could live up to his expectations. Huang Xiao said, It's good that while they were making their way deeper, no one attacked them. Suddenly, a glow appeared from a tree trunk in front of them. A colored silkworm was sitting there. He said angrily, How dare they, people, disturb the peace of their lands? Let them die. King Wu asked in bewilderment where the mutated colored silkworm came from here. Huang Xiao took a fighting stance, activated his spiritual power, and prepared to repel the attack. He admitted that they had better retreat. A luminous ball with a multicolored aura appeared in the air above them. King Wu asked excitedly, What's going on? Huang Xiao replied that they were lucky that they were protected by the cicada's wing. All they could do was wait. The colored ball with its multicolored aura struck Huang Xiao, blood gushed out of his mouth. King Wu exclaimed in fright, Elder Huang. The colored silkworm mockingly asked, Do they think that the relics of his people will protect them from his attacks? He declared that they were fools. The colored silkworm tied King Wu's arms and legs with colored threads from spiritual power, then tied it tightly around the waist. Huang Xiao fell to his knees on the ground next to him and bowed his head. The colored silkworm said she's next. He squeezed her body more and more with colored threads. She thought doomedly that she could not fulfill her master's mission. He will be disappointed with her. Tears flowed down her cheeks. She thought that Elder Huang died for the master. Now it's her turn. Lin Xiaoyan suddenly appeared and shouted angrily, How dare an evil creature harm people? With his wooden sword, he cut the threads from the colored aura and freed King Wu. The colored silkworm asked in amazement, How could a sword cut his threads? Is this really a steel divine tree? Lin Xiaoyan, holding a sword glowing with spiritual power in his hand, told her not to be afraid. His name is Lin Xiaoyan. The master sent him to help her. He menacingly declared that with this sword, he was no match for them. King Wu took the jade amulet hanging around her neck in her hand and thought happily that her master had not abandoned her. How could she give up? The colored silkworm said guiltily that they would forgive him. He didn't want to offend the mightiest of this world. Just let them not exterminate his tribe. He asks them to do so. King Wu told him to relax. They are only here for the wings of the cicadas. They will not harm his tribe. A voice rang out and said, Who would have thought that the weakness of the jade silkworms was a wooden sword? In an instant, the sword from Lin Xiaoyan's hand soared into the air and moved into the elder's hand. He shouted displeasedly, Is this his sword? He shouted angrily that this was a treasure given to him by his master. How dare he steal this? The sir won't let this go so easily. King Wu said that they are the master's faithful pawns. If the elder is here only to hinder them, then let him take it into account. He will incur his wrath. The old man, smugly clutching a glowing wooden sword to himself, said, Master this, master that. They're always talking about him, but who is he? King Wu proudly exclaimed that he was an almighty sage from Earth. The elder said thoughtfully, Earth. He then released a blue energy ball from his palm with an arrogant face and shouted that he will see if the master will save her from this. King Wu pushed Lin Xiaoyan aside and took the attack on herself. The elder, laughing evilly, said that she withstood his attack. Well done. He created another blue energy ball from his palm and wondered if it could withstand the second attack. The wounded King Wu sadly thought that she still did not live up to his expectations. 
Suddenly, the jade amulet on her neck began to glow, creating a green glow around her that completely enveloped her body. King Wu looked at this in surprise. The elder generated another energy ball and watched her in bewilderment. King Wu was surprised to realize that the jade amulet had cured her. It glowed brightly on her chest, filling her with spiritual power. Over time, a world of chaos. King Wu asked in surprise, where is she? In front of her was a lotus flower, above which nine golden rings towered. Floating above this was a jade sword with a golden hilt. Behind the lotus flower stood a guy with his back turned to her. King Wu asked hesitantly, Mr. Chen. Chen Fan stood in a smart camisole, spiritual power shining around him with a golden glow. He asked sternly, is she ready to take over his will? King Wu excitedly replied that she was always ready. Chen Fan said, then let him come to him. He extended his hand to her. She answered tenderly, yes. As King Wu approached, he touched her forehead with his index finger, filling her with his spiritual power, which emanated from his hand with a golden glow. King Wu thought gratefully that Mr. Chen was too kind to her. She will always admire him. After some time, a woman's legs and elegant, pink, crystal shoes appeared above the lotus flower, a female figure in a beautiful, elegant dress, and a new decoration in the form of horns adorned her head. A completely renewed Kin Wu was hovering above the lotus flower in a pink dress with gold jewelry at her waist and gold bracelets on her arms. The sleeves and neck were decorated with pink butterflies. Her hair fell in beautiful waves over her shoulders and back. She was all glowing with the spiritual power of the pink color. After some time in the forest of disappointment, Lin Xiaoyan respectfully fell to his knees and said enthusiastically that this is a terrifying aura. It's hard for him to even breathe. The elder fell to his knees next to him, fearfully putting his wooden sword aside. Lin Xiaoyan said excitedly, This is a goddess. The old man thought in horror that it was all over. He was finished. King Wu angrily said that she would take his life, the only way he would repay for his sins. The colored silkworm realized in amazement that she had become so strong in the face of danger. He must submit to protect his tribe. King Wu told Lin Xiaoyan to stand up. They are both pawns of Mr. Chen. There is no need to bow to her. He responded gratefully, thank you, and called her a saint. The colored silkworm cried out excitedly that he and his people were surrendering. They are ready to serve the saint. She ordered, if so, then let them collect and give them all the wings of the cicadas. The colored silkworm obediently said as she commanded. After some time, the multicolored bag began to fill with this. King Wu happily thought that this amulet was not given to her as a warning. She never thought that he would protect her. Lin Xiaoyan said that he had collected everything. King Wu replied that this is great, they are leaving. The colored silkworm asked her to stay. He asked with interest if he could meet the gentleman in person. She replied that if he wanted, he could go with them. King Wu worriedly wondered if the master would be pleased. Altogether, they rose into the sky and set off on their way back. At this time, Chen Fan hiccuped and thought in surprise, does anyone remember him? He looked forward in surprise and thought, there was a thick stem growing around the trunk of a large tree. Yellow flowers bloomed on this one. Below, on the ground, clusters of grapes grew on a stem. Chen Fan happily said that it has been ten years, and it has finally bloomed. He watered the grapes and dreamily said, The vineyard is so big, when it bears fruit, he will be able to sell it. Dragonvine thought happily that he really wanted her to be a vine. Chen Fan dreamily said that it would be nice if the tree itself also turned out to be some kind of pear tree. Yi Jing Hong approached him from behind and said that the land was ready, but no one knew how to build greenhouses. Chen Fan replied that it was not so urgent. Have him call a couple of people to set up trellises for the grapes. Yi Jing Hong replied obediently, okay? As they walked away, Emperor King happily realized that the master wanted him to be a pear tree. This is what the owner expects from him. At that moment, the entire tree was covered with white flowers. After a while, Chen Fan, seeing white flowers on the tree, exclaimed in admiration, Wow. The tree also bloomed. He was holding a box in his hands. Chen Fan said in amazement that he thought it was a willow tree. Where are the pear flowers on this tree from? Emperor King wondered anxiously, had he misunderstood him? At this time, Zio Kai was swinging on his branch. Jang Changking sadly asked his aunt to help him. Zio Kai said displeasedly that she is younger than him, so don't call her that. She said importantly that so be it, she would help him. Zio Kai jumped off the swing and ran up to Chen Fan. She called him and, pointing to the flowering tree, said that this old tree was not an ordinary pear tree, but a golden pear tree. Chen Fan asked hesitantly, right? 
Xiaokai continued that its fruits are golden in color and very tasty. Emperor King happily understood her. Xiaobai turned his head irritably and said that Chen Fan should not be so pliable. He taught her everything. He asked anxiously, what will happen now? An ant approached him and gloatingly asked, is Xiaobai hitting himself in the face? He clenched his paws irritably and asked if the ant wants, will he beat him too? The ant was indignant. They looked at each other angrily. Some time later, Chen Fan walked through the construction site and watched the progress of the greenhouse construction. He noted that old man Yi hired very diligent people. They are not afraid of work. Approaching one of the workers, Chen Fan asked Mr. Yang, was he the one who bought the painting from him for 10 gold? Why is he working here now? Yang Xiaofeng replied that he had been short of finances recently, so he decided to get a job. Chen Fan said with a smile that everything was clear to him. If he likes art, then Yang Xiaofeng can work in his workshop. Chen Fan thought that he could help him. Yang Xiaofeng looked at him in surprise and answered hesitantly, okay? After a while, when they came to the workshop, Chen Fan thought that maybe he could even pay for his work with paintings. He said out loud that when the painting was dry, you put it here. Chen Fan realized that he was not listening and called out to him. Yang Xiaofeng looked with delight at the calligraphy hanging on the wall of the workshop. Chen Fan laughed and noted that he was an art fan. Yang Xiaofeng admired the calligraphy. He remembered sharpening his sword. For ten long years he did not train, but only sharpened it. He realized that this is the degree of unity with the sword. Bowing his head and folding his hands respectfully, he said out loud that he suddenly remembered that he had unfinished business. Yang Xiaofeng asked if he could go away for a while. Chen Fan was surprised and replied that of course, no problem. Yang Xiaofeng walked out of the house into the courtyard and, shedding tears of joy, suggested that maybe through calligraphy Mr. Tai Chen decided to tell him that through cultivation alone, it is impossible to become a real master. He must use the sword to conquer the world. Chen Fan, seeing his reaction, happily thought that he definitely liked it. Some time later, Prince Zhao Tai announced that Zhao Lingzhai had teamed up with Zhao Song to kill the first emperor. Zhao Song had already told him everything. The date of her execution has already been set. Now it's Xiao Lingjai's turn. Da Shan asked, Does the great lady want him to teach him a lesson? She replied that it was not necessary. Zhao Lingjai then stated that Zhao Tai was just a weakling trying to start a rebellion. She angrily asked where he got the courage from. The armed men pointed their knives and spears at her. Behind her, the voice of General Lai Jin Yi was heard, who said that the third princess should not bear a grudge against them. Zhao Lingjai said angrily that she was surprised where this idiot had such ambition. It turned out that Lai Jin Yu was standing behind him. Zhao Tai hit the armrest with his hand and angrily demanded that she stop insulting him and call him by his title. Zhao Lingjai ignored his speech and angrily continued that it was no wonder that Lai Jin Yi had not participated in state affairs for years. He was just supporting this freak. She concluded that he wants to be emperor. The general looked at her predatorily. Zhao Lingjai said decisively, since all the traitors are already here, then it's time to start. Lai Jin Yi said smugly, let him take the risk. She activated her spiritual power. Her aura shone powerfully with fiery light. Lai Jin Yi asked dumbfounded, how is this possible? Where does she get such power from? All the men present in the hall knelt before her. They asked questions in fear. What was happening? They prayed that she would not kill them because they were ordinary servants. Someone commented that she has a scary aura. After some time, the door opened. When Zhao Lingjai and Da Shan walked out onto the porch of the palace, people joyfully greeted them with shouts. They shouted, Glory to the third princess. Glory to the new empress. At this time, behind her in the doorway, it was visible how bloody bodies lay everywhere in the throne room. Zhao Lingjai said that father had already given the order that the fifth prince should take the throne. She waved her hand, pointing to the bodies, and ordered them to release them. From now on, the Chillin Kingdom will obey the Lord of the Nameless Peak. People whispered in surprise, asking questions, so was the fifth prince supposed to take the throne? What is this Nameless Peak? Which gentlemen are we talking about? They then obediently bowed their heads and responded as she commanded. Zhao Lingjie smiled smugly and thought, what is the point of being an empress if she is supposed to be the Lord's faithful wife? They will rule the world. Some time later, Da Shen asked in surprise, so the shiny pearl was here all the time. Zhao Lingjai took the pearl in her hands and said that she had already seen it, but she could not even think that it was that same legendary artifact. She threw it on the floor and joyfully realized that, judging by the description, this was exactly what the gentleman was looking for. 
Dashan told her to give it to him, and when the time comes, the master will finally declare her his wife. Zhao Lingzhi sent the pearl into her sleeve and happily replied that he was right, they need to return. Some time later, Chen Fan wandered around the construction site and thought, when will King Wu return? The worker asked in surprise what kind of goddess this was. All the workers looked somewhere in front of them with admiration. And one of them said that this is a real saint. Chen Fan turned around and saw King Wu in a new appearance. She quietly announced that she had returned. Chen Fan was amazed by her beauty and, not believing his eyes, asked again, King Wu. He looked at her in surprise and noticed with alarm that the jade amulet had disappeared from her neck. He realized that she was not wearing an amulet. Then he concluded that King Wu was too kind, since she could not refuse him to his face, so she accepted the gift. If she doesn't have an amulet, does that mean he was rejected? Chen Fan exhaled sadly. King Wu happily announced that she had found the plastic he asked for. She asked enthusiastically, is this enough? He replied indifferently that that was enough. Chen Fan suggested that it must have been difficult for her to return alone, so let her go inside. He coldly took the plastic and turned away from her. King Wu didn't understand what was happening. But why isn't the gentleman happy that she brought him cicada wings? A little while later. Guest room. King Wu sat at the table while Yin Ziu poured tea into cups. She sadly remembered that before, he always personally poured tea for her, but today Aunt Ziu is doing it. King Wu was afraid that she had angered him somehow. Chen Fan appeared on the threshold and called her. He was hiding something behind his back. Yin Ziu bowed to him with respect. Chen Fan apologized for the wait. He decided that since she was not interested in him, it was better to be more careful. He handed over his wallet and said that this was money for plastic. Chen Fan admitted that he doesn't know how much it costs on the market. If it's not enough, then let him tell you right away. King Wu sighed in shock. She raised her hands up and said in fear that there was no need. King Wu thought in bewilderment that this was a task for her. Why did he give her money? She thought sadly that she could say straight out that he didn't want to see her. Why all this? Chen Fan took her palm, put down the wallet with money, and sternly told her to take it. He thought that he shouldn't have been in such a hurry. He ruined everything himself. Chen Fan headed towards the exit and said that he would go cook. King Wu looked after him and didn't believe that he really hated her. They rushed in different directions at the same time, and with tears in their eyes, thought that they would not rush anymore. A little while later, the foot of an unnamed mountain. Yi Jing Hong listened to the story of his daughter, who was wiping away her sorrowful tears, and guessed what the master wanted to say. He gave her a jade amulet and a huge chance, but she didn't understand what it was for from the very beginning. Because of this, King Wu was delayed on her mission. It makes sense that he's angry. King Wu asked hopefully, Yi Jing Hong wants to say that the master is just angry and has not turned his back on her. He assured that, of course. At first, she must go back and figure out the meaning of the second scarf. In time, he will forgive her. King Wu and King Yin, who were listening to him with interest, obediently answered in one voice, okay? King Yin sadly said that King Wu was at least able to understand the meaning of the scarf, not like her. King Wu sadly admitted that her and her lives were very difficult. Suddenly, King Wu remembered with despair that she had left the colorful silkworm on the Nameless Mountain. A little while later, Nameless Mountain Viewpoint. Chen Fan held the grass in his teeth and sadly thought that Yi King Wu was very beautiful today. He suggested that maybe she was some kind of big shot from the clan? Chen Fan remembered what jewelry she was wearing, an elegant dress and beautiful shoes. He compared himself to her with disappointment. Chen Fan then decided that even if King Wu was too good for him, he should not give up. He said out loud, if he cannot cultivate, he will simply become the best mortal. He will work hard and earn money, so he can become the richest. All this time, the multicolored silkworm watched him in surprise and listened carefully. A little while later, Nameless Mountain, a white dragon appeared in the sky. It was the fourth dragon princess, Albe. She happily said that she had found it. Albe saw the prince of the Eastern Sea Dragon Clan lying on the ground, on which the white dog Ziobai was jumping with his paws. She shouted furiously that this was her third brother, a proud and young dragon. How can a lower being step on his head? Albe rushed down in anger, but stopped. She saw higher beings next to the prince. Albe wondered why they were pretending to be mortal beings. Then, looking around, she was surprised to realize that all the local workers were also cultivators. Blue spiritual power emanated from all the men who worked there. She realized that even the weakest of them are at least her rank. Albe hid behind the trees in fear. She realized that she could not save her brother yet. 
It's good that the dragon robe hides her aura. She will be able to spy and reconnoiter the situation. She decided that the one who dared to mock her brother would suffer severe punishment. Albe looked to the side and saw a man leading a bull on a leash. She thought with surprise that this was the young master of the Azure Bull clan. An Azure Bull that turned into a normal bull. The Azure Bull was dragged by a rope attached to a ring in its nose. Zhao Lingzhai went to Da Shan and called her father and mother. Her father pulled the bull by a tight rope while her mother pushed him to the side. Suddenly, the empress covered her mouth with her hand in fear and asked Zhao Lingzhai a question, is she riding Chen Fan's pet? Zhao Lingzhai drove up to Da Shan and waved her hand in greeting, telling them not to worry because the master told her to ride it. The empress asked everything with admiration, so did the gentleman rightfully appreciate her? The emperor was pleased that they managed to catch the azure bull near the endless sea. Now their whole family will be useful to the master. Da Shan looked at the embarrassed Zhao Lingzhai and said that he appreciated it was not quite that. He added that the gentleman is in love with the lady. The empress took Zhao Lingzhai's hand with sincere happiness and asked the question, is this true? Zhao Lingzhai continued to look down in embarrassment and replied, Master hasn't said it directly yet, but she thought it was so. The emperor, stunned, asked the question, When she gives him a basketball, will he recognize her as his wife? Zhao Lingzhai gradually moved away from her parents and answered awkwardly that this was true. Azure Bull narrowed his eyes angrily and said that the real clown family talked too much. He thought that he would soon find out who the unsurpassed sage of the earth was, some time later. Above the house was a star, from each corner of which there were five different colored signs. The azure bull was stunned and asked the question, what? Zhao Lingjai continued to ride ahead of the emperor and empress. She called Chen Fan's name. The azure bull at this time asked a puzzled question, was there a meeting of all the legendary elemental spirits here? Chen Fan mentally and reproachfully asked the question, how can she ride a horse when her parents walk? At that same second, he greeted the emperor and empress out loud. He exclaimed that they had arrived. Zhao Lingzhai embarrassedly told him that she had also returned. Chen Fan at this time turned to her parents, asking the question what brought them here. He asked why they needed a bull. The emperor rubbed the azure bull's mane and said that he was so kind to their daughter. He continued with an awkward smile that it was as a sign of gratitude. The azure bull looked ahead skeptically. Chen Fan hospitably pointed to the entrance to his courtyard and told them to come in and have tea with him. He suggested that they could leave the bowl here and someone would take him to the site. Zhao Lingzhai continued to look at him with confusion. She thought it was strange. She mentally asked the question, why did he ignore her? Ao Bei hid behind a tree and mentally reasoned that they were treating him with respect. She assumed he was hiding his powers. She mentally exclaimed that she was too weak and could not feel it. Ao Bei began to run away and exclaimed that she would ask the elder to help her save her brother. Meanwhile, elsewhere. The fragrant smell of tea came from the mug. Chen Fan asked them a question. Since the two of them arrived, maybe they need help with something? The emperor held the mug in his hands and looked to the side awkwardly. Chen Fan told him not to be shy. Zhao Lingzhai stood and looked at them. Chen Fan couldn't gather his thoughts. The emperor and empress had to walk while their daughter rode alongside. He thought they were very tired. The emperor looked at Chen Fan and admitted that they would like to work for him. Chen Fan replied that it was all no problem. He advised them to rest first and talk to Yu Jing Hong, who would give them work. The emperor put his hand forward comfortingly and told him not to worry because they would immediately begin work. Some time later, the emperor and empress bowed in respect and thanked him. They said it was an honor to work with him. Chen Fan thought that this was a cute couple and he would have to help them. Zhao Lingzhai continued to watch them silently. After some time, she turned to him and presented him with a basketball, saying that it was for him. It shone brightly in her hands. Chen Fan looked at the basketball with delight. He took it in his hands in surprise and asked a question, a basketball? He mentally asked the question, where is the basketball here? Chen Fan put it on the table and said, flowers and plants do not need to be watered every day. He added that it would be better to leave her to Yi Jing Hong. He will give her work. Zhao Lingzhai mentally asked the question, is the master taking away her position as the creator of rivers and seas and making her an ordinary follower of Yi Jing Hong? She asked with tears in her eyes why. Chen Fan put his hand forward, stopping her speech, and asked the question, Is it true that she and Yin Ziu live together? He said let her move in with her parents now because it will be better for her. He thought happily that if the family lived together, then internal problems would be solved. 
He began to move away from Zhao Lingzhe, dissatisfied, and thought that he was very smart. Zhao Lingzhe sank to the floor, starting to sob desperately. Some time later, the Empress calmed her down. The Empress, stroking Zhao Lingzhe on the back, asked a question. Did the master want to make her his wife? She asked why he changed his mind. Yi Jinghong looked down and said that they were just pawns of the master. They cannot show emotions, otherwise they will be punished. Zhao Lingzhi, tightly hugging the empress, said that he had given her an important task, which was the creation and irrigation of rivers and lakes. Yi Jinghong wearily replied that she was just one of the commanders in the plan to conquer the world. He added that she simply misunderstood him. Zhao Lingzhi desperately wiped away her tears and asked a question. Then why did he ask her about return gifts? Zio Kai replied that the master wants to experience all the feelings that mortals can experience. She explained that falling in love was no exception. He chose her not because he was in love, but because he wanted to experience what it was like to truly love someone. The empress closed her eyes with regret. Yi Jinghong put his finger forward and confirmed this, saying that Chen Fan gave her a watering can. He asked her a question. Does she think that with the help of a watering, can they now confess their love? Zhao Lingzhi sadly rubbed her eyes and asked a question, so it turns out that these were just her own feelings. Some time later in the hallway of the dorm, Yi Jinghong asked a question to Lady Zio Kai, should he ask her something? Zio Kai replied that he should only call her Zio Kai. She added that she admires Chen Fan just as much as he does. Yi Jinghong exclaimed with a warm smile, okay. He said, she said that the master wanted to experience all the feelings that mortals can experience. He asked the question, does this apply to marriage or having children? Zio Kai awkwardly straightened her hair and asked a question, is he asking this because of Yi King Wu's feelings? She said she didn't know if she had a chance. Yi Jing Hong clasped his hands behind his back and thought that in any case, they could always wait and see when the chance came. He mentally asked the question, what kind of women does Chen Fan like? People or maybe perfume? 